Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting for March 4th, 2019 at 7.15 uh, p.m. at the Town Hall offices. Tonight's agenda is a look at minutes of previous meetings, review mail, take some public comment, and then we have two public hearings that are being continued. One is a site plan review and special permit at 10 Greenfield Road. Uh, Deerfield Naturals LLC has submitted an application for both a site plan review and a special permit for cannabis cultivation, manufacturing, and retail sales facility in a currently developed location. Assessor's Map 1675, Lot 6, Zoned Industrial 1, within the town's Marijuana Overlay District. The second public hearing will be a site plan review and special permit of 198 Mill Village Road, which is Sun Mass Inc., has submitted a proposal for a cannabis cultivation facility on land currently used for agricultural purposes located at 198 Mill Village Road and, abutting, and including the budding properties at 196 and 200 Mill Village Road. Then we'll do a uh, look at other items and any business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and we'll adjourn. Uh, planning board members have anything to add or take away from that? All right, and we do have a uh, quorum. If we can just introduce ourselves, you want to start, Roger? Roger Stasky. Paul Ellis. Kip Kamosa. John Waite. Rachel Blaine. And we have a, uh, our town council is with us tonight, Adam Costa, and we appreciate you being here. Of course, Adam. Um, the other item, actually, that I was informed we should take up is we did have a um, resignation of one of our members last meeting, and I think we're supposed to acknowledge that in a vote or something. In a vote? Uh, that's what I was told. Does that make sense? Or Never it's not like we approve it or anything. I don't know. We read it into the minutes, so as long as it's in, right. in the okay. minutes, I think it's probably good. All right, so we have minutes from uh, for, uh, January 7th, 7th and February 19th. You want to take January 7th and, and first? And 23rd as well, if you want to. And then amended ones from um, from January 23rd. So let's do January 7th. Seventh, I don't have him in my minutes that way, but because it says that he it said, that said something. Have, uh, oh, it, it was referenced by Ch Chris Chamberlain, but I don't think he was here. I mean, he's here tonight, right? So I think we could actually. I'm um, Dubin, Dubin, Dubin. Yes, Dorf. yes, but I think what we could do is leave that out because that comes up again. Yeah. Say say what on that? It makes it seem like he was here, so we should leave that sentence out. Because he then did come. Section uh, number two. Okay. Oh, three number See, two. I put that under Chris Chamberlain's report of the of the right. project, and that they contacted Dubendorf, and he said it was okay concerning the APR. And then I think right. they brought him in the next meeting. But okay. whatever you want to do, change it. We'll we'll change it. So at the bottom of the page there, we say that a motion was made by John Wade, seconded by Kip, to hire a peer review for the stormwater review. And the next sentence says there was no need for a technical peer review, but that's, that's what we did, is we, we put out a RFP. Oh, you yeah. did? Okay, because I, I first, for whatever reason, it said in the minutes that I took the notes that, that was, don't, there was no need. There was a need for the RF, uh, RFQ down here. But, so did you get a second RFQ out for that one? 
Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying we, we did the stormwater. Someone did the stormwater review. That right. is a technical peer review for stormwater. I don't know what that oh, means. Oh, the technical, I think, was like what Pat Smith used to do. Oh, that's, we, that's what we call administrative. Sorry, okay. Because technical is usually the engineering. Okay. The administrative is the other one. So you think that should have said so it should technical? say administrative. Administrative. Yes. Okay. I'll change that. I move to approve the minutes of January 7th, 2019 with the uh, changes made. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I'll abstain. Roger wasn't there, so. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, zero, one. Four, zero, one. Then the January 23rd one, which is the next one, just going in order. Okay. There was a question last month, last meeting, whether we needed to include um, down the bottom, a vote on the a, a revote of uh, stormwater, mm -hmm. but the vote we had made on the stormwater back on I think it was December third or something was still valid. It didn't need a super majority, oh, okay. so it didn't need to be voted on on this one. Okay. So that okay. we so don't then that, that stormwater that's written above special permit should be just crossed out. Right. And and down below. So twelve. So twelve nineteen included vote on stormwater can stay in there then. Yeah. Or, or not, as you choose to. Yeah, so that doesn't, so really your minutes were fine the way they were. Yeah. Okay, so leave that section put out too, okay. All right. Just for the hearing, the one hearing was missing there, that's the only. Yeah, the word hearing. Yeah. All right. I'll I move that we accept the minutes. I'll second it. All those in favor of approving the January 23rd minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. I'll abstain. You weren't there. Wow. Um, uh, February 19th minutes. Oh. You don't have that? Oh, yeah, I do. Hey. We talked about 198 Mill Village Road that yeah, night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Couple of spelling things, but we can get them corrected. Otherwise, um, but are they, uh, John? Just so I can, I see the word four is word four on and, Dick Kalashewski, yeah. And stormwater, and um, the stormwater is that supposed to be one word or two? It's, it always comes up with an error. Yeah, I think it's two. Is it supposed to be one word or two? two one word, I think. And where is it at? Oh, where's, where's the stormwater? You well, plus it's O R. That's all. It's all. It's just. Oh yeah. Storm. And I'm not sure what strong water. Yeah, it's strong water. The third one, third bullet up from the bottom, single D, single owner. What's a deed? I'm sorry. Single deed. Single, single deed, single owner. And then I think um, Dubendorf is spelled different ways in different places, so we'll get that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I was putting a B in there, and I think it's a P instead of a B. Where's the other place that it's wrong? Is it? Is it P? Right here. 
Is it a B or a P? B. Yeah. B. Okay. I will correct that then. And then. These um these bullets <laughs> under here are you're not attributing the, their opinions. They're not any facts. So I'm a little they're what, wary. They're what the people. Um, I know, but it doesn't say. So maybe you just have to add that the applicants. Well, it's not just the applicants. It's it's like Dick Kalashewski did some talking about it, and there was a thing from the DPW. So um, I can try to. I just I think in the, I think at the end Dick actually did find something about the daycare, and then these other couple things are really opinions that the daycare... Right. You're not these a daycare, but a family daycare is, is like, I don't know where that, you know, so... How would you like to change that, then? I'd just take them out. I mean, there's a lot of things were said. I don't know why these got put into the bill bullets, actually. Well, the first one. Well, no, not all of them, I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. So I think... So just bullet, tell, tell one, me. two, three, four, the fifth bullet... Let's take that out. One, two, three. Take okay. out all the way down to the fifth bullet? No, take out the fifth bullet. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, take that out. About the daycare, because okay. that's just confusing. I think if someone reads this later on. I just okay. wrote, see the documents that were presented by the, by the, uh, Right, but they're the, not the attached. Applicant. But they're not attached, so I think it's not. Well, no, I mean, they have to be attached. I don't have all those documents, but. We're supposed to attach them to the minutes, aren't we? We don't have an attachment. Uh, you spelled I'm Roger's name wrong, too, at the end, but anyway. Well, no. At the very end of the... All right. So everybody... Oh, Sadowski, yep. Okay. You good with these, with the uh, yeah. changes? Yeah. I wasn't here at that meeting, but I did watch it, so... You want to move? I move that we accept the minutes uh, with the amendments. February 19th. Oh, second. February 19th. Second. I'll second. Oh, okay. Roger. And then All those Rachel's. in favor, aye. aye. Oppose, aye. abstain. Five zero. I, you I can vote if you're sorry. Yeah. 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 I'm for it. So it's uh, five zero zero. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Moving right along. So just quickly, sometimes if there's um, if someone has some public comment that it can't wait or it's not on the agenda, if you have something to say now, this would be the time to do it. Seeing seeing nothing, we'll move on to the public hearings. All right, I'd like to open the uh, continuation of the public hearing for a site plan review and special permit of 10 Greenfield Road, Deerfield Naturals LLC. They've submitted an application for a site plan review and special permit for cannabis cultivation, manufacturing, and retail sales facility in a currently developed location, uh, zoned industrial, and within the town's marijuana overlay district. So thank you for coming back. And I think we've, it was just in some of the minutes we read there that we've already talked about a lot of things and the building. Um, I think we didn't have many issues with the building. Um, so then the, the main item that I know we wanted some resolution with was the um, being within 500 feet of a daycare center. Are there other issues that we want to continue with tonight? I was just had some concerns about the lighting. They're going to have down lighting in one place had uh, infrared lighting. I don't know if that's part of the security. If it's not needed, I was just going to say why have it if it's not needed? I don't know if it's really a crucial part of uh, the security or not. And I was just going to pose that question. But that's been the day for you, like you said, whether it's the boundary or the facility, that's the only other one I can see without this thing. Can you just tell us about the lighting? Do you have? Yeah, so most of the property has uh, lighting that's off of street lamps already, which are uh, provided by Eversource, so those will remain. Um, the exterior of the building is going to get new LED wall packs. Is that a requirement, Matt, from the state to have that, or is that just added? To have the property lit 
No, no, no. The, 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 on the back of the building. I guess there isn't any existing now, and you're going to put it because of security reasons. Is that a requirement? Because no, it is, like it's not a requirement to have okay, the property. Okay, so you, you don't really need it. You feel that you want it. That's Correct. All. Yeah. We just want to have all the paved areas lit. Yeah. So the last plans we have are December 10th, uh, December 14th. Yeah, there was um, the one page site plan update, which um, I provided last meeting. I don't know if you have that or not. And there was a landscaping plan update as well, which included the arbor vitaes along the back fence area. Section 2300, dimensional requirements of a table, setbacks, uh, 2320, and footnote 8 to that um, says no marijuana establishment shall be cited within a radius of 500 feet of a public or private school, daycare center, or any facility in which children commonly congregate. Said distance to be measured in the straight line from the nearest point of the property line of said facility to the nearest point of the property line of the medical marijuana treatment center or medical or marijuana establishment. So based on your maps you, you presented and I think um, it's, it is within 500 feet property line to property line. Is that? I don't, I don't understand. I thought is that a determination by town council that the daycare family daycare in question qualifies as a daycare center? Oh, good question. And we have town council with us. That's, that's the first question. Sure. So um, that was one of the reasons why I was asked to, to be in attendance tonight. So um, I haven't been at your last couple of meetings, but I understand there's been some discussion about how the facility qualifies. And uh, I received some correspondence from uh, the applicant's counsel, Attorney Aleo, uh, letter back on February 5th, just about uh, a month or so ago, um, that addressed the issue. And uh, John, you just read the provision in section 2300, which you'll recall when I was out here uh, for a series of consecutive meetings back about a year ago when we drafted the uh, medical, uh, excuse me, the recreational marijuana establishments bylaw, new addition to your bylaws. Um, we had a discussion where we compared the provisions of the regulatory and, and statutory scheme for recreational marijuana to what already existed for medical marijuana. And you had already adopted certain provisions in your zoning bylaw relative to medical marijuana. And one of the issues that we had discussed is that in the old medical marijuana statutory and regulatory scheme, there was this standard uh, measurement from uh, public and private schools, K through 12, uh, daycare facilities as they're called, and other facilities where children commonly congregate. And you had a, a provision that sort of mimicked the statute and the regulations in the medical scheme um, that provided that same setback in your, in your bylaw. And so when we talked about crafting a marijuana establishments bylaw to address recreational marijuana, we talked about how we might modify that provision and whether you wanted to apply that same setback requirement to recreational facilities. And the sense of the board was that you did want to do that. And so what we did, in addition to crafting a whole new section of your code, what is it, 4660 for marijuana establishments, is we went back into section 2300 
And we found that footnote that John just read to your dimensional table where there was a reference to medical marijuana treatment centers in this 500 foot setback from those types of facilities. And we added to that statement the, the <coughs> phrase marijuana establishment. So we applied that same setback to marijuana establishments. And we talked about the fact that that was a bit more restrictive than what the legislature has determined and the Cannabis Control Commission has determined under the recreational scheme is allowed um, as a baseline. The Cannabis Control Commission has said that um, certainly public or private schools, K through, through 12, this setback uh, applies, um, but has not addressed daycare facilities, has not addressed facilities where children commonly congregate. That was sort of a um, language that had, had existed in the medical marijuana context. But you carried it through to the recreational marijuana context, and that's how your, your bylaw stands today. So the issue raised by the Applicants Council is does this facility in question qualify as a daycare center or a daycare facility? Um, and so there's, as I said, a, a three-page letter that I received that sort of gets into some of the particulars of how Massachusetts state law defines daycare center as compared to how Massachusetts state law defines family child care facility. And I, I would concede, I don't necessarily disagree with anything in the letter, that from a, from a, uh, a regulatory perspective, state law defines these facilities differently. State law regulates these facilities differently. Um, the question for you is, how does that carry through to your bylaw? Um, we're not dealing with licensing of these facilities, we're dealing with a zoning bylaw and the intent of the phrasing that you opted to use in your zoning bylaw. Um, to sort of shortcut what could be a very complicated discussion about, well, what did you mean when you said daycare center? Did you mean simply the traditional daycare center as defined by Massachusetts state law, or did you mean something more all-encompassing, something that would include family uh, child care facilities? I think we can eliminate that discussion, quite frankly, because you also have a phrase in your zoning bylaw or facilities where children commonly congregate. And that is a broader phrase um, that is meant to encompass something other than simply K through 12, something other than um, uh, traditional daycare centers. And I did a little research because I was wondering whether there was any case law out there or any other guidance out there that dealt with this mm -hmm. idea of facilities where children commonly congregate. I wasn't sure I'd find anything because, again, that phrase was first created about six or seven years ago when medical marijuana was legalized in Massachusetts. I did find one case that exists, and it's a case that was decided in 2016, a couple of years ago. It's a, a, a trial court case um, out of the land court, and uh, former Chief Justice Shire um, had to confront this specific language and determine whether or not the facility in question here qualified as a, um, a facility where children commonly congregate. Um, and the issue was a bit different than what's before you today. It went into some, some, some details relative to um, the, the interplay between the state regulation and the, the bylaw as it existed in the town of Brookline. But what I think is important and, and the important takeaway from the case is that the facility that was at issue in, in the, um, the, the case was a, a facility called the Golden Chickpea Center, which is a facility in Brookline that was a family child care center, very similar to what we've apparently got here, something that was different than daycare. And in fact, when Judge Shire analyzed the case, she acknowledged and sort of accepted as fact without even getting into it that the facility in question was not K through 12 education and was not a daycare center. And she immediately sort of proceeded with analysis under the other catch-all that they had. This was a medical marijuana facility in question, so it was under that scheme. Immediately went to the question of, you know, what, is this a facility where children commonly congregate, and how that uh, how that uh, uh, played off with respect to the um, the town's bylaw and the and the, and the state regulation. So. The board can try to get into that analysis of what did you mean when you said daycare facility a year ago and you adopted this bylaw? Did you mean for it to be an all-encompassing phrase that included child care facilities? But I think that the question might be answered for you by the fact that you went on to say, or facility where children commonly congregate. And so that's a broader phrase. And then the question for you is, is this child care, family child care center in question, a facility where children commonly congregate? And I don't know enough about it to even give you an opinion on that. I don't know that my opinion would, would be worth anything to you. It's really a factual determination and not a legal determination. Uh, it's a question of, you know, how is it operating? I, I actually went because I uh, was curious as I read this case about the, the Golden Chickpea Center, and I pulled up the website to see how 
substantial of a facility this Golden Chickpea Center is. The case is only two years old. I presume it's still in business, and it is. And they've got, you know, uh, they've got an after-school program. They've got a preschool program. They've got a summer program. So it's a fairly comprehensive program in question here. Um, wasn't the daycare? Wasn't the K through 12 education? But was a fairly comprehensive offering of um, uh, of classes and other programs that clearly catered to children. Um, so I don't think there was a question and there wasn't much of an analysis in the case as to whether children commonly congregated here. I think it was sort of assumed that they do. Whether this facility you have before you is this, this child care facility that's within 500 feet of the applicant's uh, proposed uh, site qualifies as a facility where children commonly congregate, you'd have to know more about that facility before you can make that determination. And maybe you do. But based on the documents I had presented, I, I didn't. That's copies of Registration with the state, and it's valid. I call contact with the state this past week, and that license is valid for the states. So this is um, this appears to be the you know the registration information for the entity and yeah. it, it's it's helpful but it's fairly basic. Yeah. Um, it indicates that it has a, a license. It indicates that it's a quote unquote family child care, much like the the Golden Chickpea Center was. Um, is it offering after school, preschool, summer programs, uh, walk-in classes, and all that? I, I can't tell from here. It looks like they have uh, part week, full day, and full week schedule options. Now what that schedule consists of and um, uh, is unclear. It doesn't appear that they have, uh, in terms of schedule shifts before and after school, it just says full year, full time and part time. It says no to drop in care. So it appears from this registration information, this licensure information, that maybe it's not as, an extent, as extensive an operation as the one in the case was. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's an analysis that only you can perform based upon what you know. And again, if you want to look back at what your intent was when you crafted the zoning, it's not that old. It's you know, you, you did it a year ago. So was your intention to encompass this sort of a facility or not? And that interpretation initially rests with you and with your building department. And you have a degree of discretion in making that determination so long as it's not in conflict with the plain language of the bylaw. But unfortunately, the bylaw doesn't define it. There's no definition for daycare in the bylaw. Okay. Um. Any John, questions? do you think it would be of any use to hear from the daycare center's owner or operator, I think she's here, to find out what age children go there, how many, and how frequent? Okay. If she's willing. If you're willing to come up and give us some information on that? Sure. Sure. Yes, sir. So I'm licensed right now for up to 10 children. I can have six on my own, and I can have an additional four with an assistant, and I have a, an assistant at the moment. I take children from birth to typically three years at this point, and then I have my own two children that also count in that ratio, and they come home after school. And I don't have a website, but I have a parent handbook, and it outlines all of the curriculum that I go over and what we do from day to day with um, you know, art and sensory activities, and I give them all their meals and their snacks, and they, but, you know, I could elaborate. I'm just curious, I, I haven't really paid attention when I go by your house. Is, is your yard fenced where the kids go out? Yes. Yes, it is. That's right. And if you take the kids out for a walk, they're always within your eyes, your reach, or whatever, I assume. Right, we typically just walk from the house to the fence in area okay. and if we go for uh, stroller walks we'll just go from the front door to the stroller and wagon and and do walk. you ever have children that are over the age of five or it's not all that typical on a snow day perhaps you know maybe yeah. an older sibling things like that but I don't usually register children over the age of five because they're in school <laughs> or I usually recommend they go to a preschool at that point sure. so that they can get ready for kindergarten and have that kind of day Okay. So the most you ever have is 10? That's the most I can ever have, yeah. You can have that's the limitation of your, your For a family daily. child care. I mean, I think that's, that's about it. That's all I would have. Yeah. yeah. Thank but you. But is that limitation, sorry, is that limitation set by your uh, square footage, your, your site, or is that set by 
It's a combination of things. It is. But basically, the state law requires a certain amount of square footage for each child in each room and sleep space and all this. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's like a complicated mm -hmm. equation. Mm -hmm. Outside space, they also take into account. And they, when they license you, they go through all of these things. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That's Thank really you. helpful. So, to me, it's a question: Is you're, it's leaving? How, how much discretion does the planning board have versus town meeting or, or zoning board or, or someone else? Because we have the words here, and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody's worried about the, you know, safety issue necessarily, and that maybe was the reason for this bylaw. But yet, whatever the reason for the bylaw, this is what we have in front of us. So that's really where we would like your input is, can, can we say the most ever there is 10 kids and they're all under five so that we don't have to consider this uh, item number eight? Um, so so you, you can't avoid considering eight, but you, you can interpret within reason the phrase daycare center, and you can interpret within reason the phrase any facility in which children commonly congregate. So uh, town meeting, of course, is, is uh, obligated to take action on any zoning bylaw. You don't have a zoning bylaw without a town meeting vote. You don't amend a zoning bylaw without a town meeting vote. Um, unfortunately, bylaws um, are not always uh, unambiguous in their interpretation. <laughs> uh, in the ideal case, a term will be used. You'll turn to the definition section. You'll see a, an objective definition. There will be no questions about how it gets applied. Um, Increasingly, as um, zoning has to be more creative to address uh, newer and different types of uses, as developers get more creative in their approaches, um, there is more and more opportunity, more and more need for municipalities to interpret phrase, phrases that are used in a zoning bylaw. Um, the the uh, interpretation process, if, if I'm a potential developer and I want to seek that interpretation before I begin the process, I can go to the building department, I can seek an interpretation. There's a process under the zoning bylaw that allows for that. Uh, some building inspectors won't give interpretations. Um, an applicant can also simply proceed to the permitting board under the belief that it requires X permit or Y permit. And then when before that board, that board has to do its best to interpret the bylaw that's before it. Um, if the applicant believes that it's been interpreted incorrectly and has resulted in some adverse action, then the applicant can appeal the decision that issues. Similarly, if you interpret it in a way that the public believes they've been impacted and that your interpretation is reasonable, they have certain, certain appellate rights as well. Um, but, you know, the, again, we can walk through sort of the, uh, you know, what they call uh, statutory principles um, uh, of interpretation, where you look first within the four corners of the document in front of you. You then look to common usage of the terminology. You then look to definitions in other statutory or regulatory contexts. And again, this is some of what the applicant has done when it's cited to state regulations relative to, to daycare uh, centers versus uh, family child care facilities. Um, it, my, my sense of it is that uh, I think they've got an argument, no question, that this is not a traditional quote unquote daycare because of the fact that the state defines them differently than uh, family child care centers. In my mind, the, 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 the further statement right. that um, this, this buffer is also measured from facilities where children commonly congregate, that's the, that's the more difficult obstacle to overcome. So it's up to you to determine you know, what was really meant by that. Facility where children commonly congregate, was it focused in on um, older children versus younger children versus infants um, or toddlers? Did, did it mean children in a more traditional sense? Was it a concern for uh, uh, older children and their ability to have access to these sorts of facilities? Or was it meant to be broader? Um, did it mean a few children in a home setting or did it mean any facility where children commonly congregate? How different is this facility that might have on an average day six or seven or eight children from maybe a, a family that chooses to have five or six or seven kids? Uh, that, is that now a facility where children commonly congregate? So there's certainly some room for interpretation here and in that sense you have the discretion to make that determination. Well. <laughs> The way I kind of see this is that the whole rule was put in place to protect kids 
uh, from getting in, getting a hold of the drugs of any sort. And that I think, for me, a big consideration is the number and the age of these children there. Um, I, I feel that it's highly unlikely that a two, three, or four-year-old is going to wander outside of this building and uh, wander over to uh, a marijuana establishment where it could be confronted by somebody trying to give or sell drugs to this infant. Uh, I think that there's, or I know that there's going to be a fence around this facility, um, and there's railroad tracks. Uh, there's, I think, a, even though property line to property line is only is less than 500 feet, the distance is is greater than that. Um, I do think that holding this daycare facility or family service center to the same standards as if it was um, even just like a, a, a soda shop where you know you had you know 20 teenagers you know or 10 year olds or 12 year olds going there every evening or on weekends hanging out all the time I think that would be a different different ball of wax I think that for me that it's a safety thing more than just the bylaws and, and given um, how we could interpret the daycare in the child uh, facility is a little bit different I, I don't know I don't I don't see that uh, to me that wouldn't be that big of a, an obstacle my my sense of our intention was actually we we in in our discussion we talked about Yankee Candle actually right. that was right. where, yeah. that was our bigger concern to yeah. be frank I, yeah. and I think ball fields yeah. you know that kind of mm -hmm. um, a soda, soda sure. shop. I don't know. Kids do that anymore, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, certainly we did. So, um, not to the pharmacy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, anyway, I, I do think that that was our intention at the time. Um, just looking back, if that's one of the criteria, um, and you know, it does. It, you hate to think that you're you're making rules that are so pinpoint perfect that. You know, children who congregate on over the age of five, um, that you, 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 we have to be able to have some of that uh, kind of leeway, because I think that uh, that's, that's why language can't hold us perfectly. Otherwise, Adam would have a job. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that the, uh, I would, if it's ambiguous, I would um, go to the side of, what the uh, applicant wants, myself. I would add to your thing about the safety, also the, the marketing of it, and we, you know, there's no big signs and stuff, and we've already talked about putting the uh, variety back there, screening it, and so I tend to think South Street won't even know what's in this building on, on Greenfield Road. Mm -hmm. It's two separate entrances, you know, it's all, it's really, mm -hmm. really separated that way. Do you have any comments on this, Roger? Are you okay with? Well, well, however we vote, it's going to be a precedent first time around. That's right. And I listen to everybody, and yeah. it makes sense what you're saying. Yeah. I don't know what kind of precedent we're going to set. That's the, my only concern. But yep. whatever you said does make sense. It's I mean, older again, I think, children. Yeah. It doesn't mean she can't have older children, I guess, right. from her. Well, the state. other thing is anybody can... A new place could open the day after this place opens, right. and then what do you, you know, I don't know if that's come up well, in case one yet. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. What would happen, Adam? It, it's pre-existing. So the regulation can only apply to pre-existing facilities, right. and the, the, the regulations actually use the, that term. So it wouldn't apply to future facilities that open. The, I think, guess the presumption is that those facilities are aware. Yeah. Um, it's meant to protect the facility, obviously the children as well, but pr to protect the facility. And if a facility opens the day after, then they're aware of what exists. and. They, they open at their own risk. That would be such an interesting thing to find out <laughs> if, if in the regulating the, the licensing board came and somebody else wanted to open another yeah. family, a child care center close by. Yeah. That would be an interesting, but we this, won't. This facility is going to be a sale, retail, plus a grow. Do these regulations apply to our grow facilities also? Uh, yes, in our bylaws, we use the word marijuana establishment, just, um, which all is all of them. Okay, I'm just... Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you are correct. Within the actual bylaw re re regulating marijuana establishments, you differentiate between the types. 
uh, and you do regulate them somewhat differently, but the setback requirement and the buffer requirement apply to all marijuana establishments equally. All right, and, and I just, I guess just for the neighbor who's kind of involved in this, if, if you wanted to offer a, a strong opinion, if, if, no. if this would Gilby, cause... Gilby Way, uh, Gilby Bees, and I brought this up, but just yeah. I wanted to make sure it all fit in with the, uh, the lay of the law, that, you know, whatever we put down. Yeah. And that was the only reason I brought it up Thank initially. You. All right. Thank you. I think Maggie might have one more question. I didn't think to look into the state law as far as what is concerning where I am. So I'm, now I'm wondering about that, if I'm okay being there if they exist. Yeah, no, oh. I, I, that's, oh, another, yeah. that's another question. So I, I don't know because I didn't really think to look into that. She's pre-existing, so that's not. That's not what she's asking. No. She goes well, to her regulatory board and she says, oh, oh by the way, X oh, is be the way is. When she can get re reapply to get relicensed. Re because yeah. yeah. I am going to get relicensed this year. And so I need to make sure, I mean, it would seem unfair. If right. I had to show no, her absolutely. Her that's a big, yeah. Do you have an effect? Uh, so, so I don't. I mean, I, I think there's no question that from a zoning perspective, she's safe. She's right. got an operation that's in existence. Uh, from a licensure perspective, I'm not going to pretend that I'm all that familiar with uh, <coughs> family child care facility licensing requirements. I, I, I simply don't know them well. I review them in the context of the letter that I received from council. Um, so I don't, I don't know whether it would have any effect. You know, I will say that these, you know, this standard as it exists, so I would presume that from, and again, it's a presumption and nothing more, I would presume that from the perspective of the licensing agency, they would be looking to the applicability of other state laws. And this standard, this 500-foot setback from facilities where children commonly congregate, that is not a standard that's found in state law. In fact, the only standard that's found in state law is a 500-foot setback from schools, schools K-12. So this is a more stringent standard that you've adopted in Deerfield for these sorts of facilities. It's not a state law standard. So to the extent that the licensing authority is looking to state law, this facility is in compliance and the, the child care facility will be in compliance. But I can't speak to the extent to which the licensing authority looks to other local laws in compliance with those laws or potential non-compliance and considers that as a factor in renewing or issuing a new license. Mm -hmm. So I guess all we can say is if it, well, it, if it be becomes a problem, come back to us. But um, a condition. I mean, it could be a condition because we yeah, can't we can't put one business in place. I know, but we're if we if we approve this, it, it starts operating, and then she finds out a year later it's wow. a problem. We can't go back and do anything about it. Um, again, I just. I know, yeah, right. Yeah, and, it's new for everyone, and they're trying yeah. to set some regulatory boundaries. But, but so what Adam is saying is that our because our ours are more stringent, it's very possible that the regulatory board is going to go more to the state and less to the local. Yeah, I and mean, it's it kind of goes both ways, I would imagine. Uh, the, the, the only the imagine. only thing I can it liken it ways. liken it to, from my experience, is you know concerns with respect to the opening of um, stores that have liquor licenses, right. and there are certain restrictions on their proximity to other types of facilities that are pre-existing. I don't think there's any basis for those other facilities to the extent that they require certain licenses mm -hmm. to be um, refused a license based upon the fact that you've had a liquor license establishment open up in proximity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the challenge here is that. You're working within the confines of your zoning bylaw. You've got an applicant before you. You've got to act based upon the standards in your bylaw. And the, the issue that has been raised is an issue, at least to the extent that it relates to relicensing re of the of the child care facility, family child care facility. That is a, a licensure issue. It's a, a state license issue that is you know well beyond your purview. So even if you wanted to condition it, I'm not sure how you go about doing that. Right, 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 right. All right. Other issues on the, for the 10 Greenfield Road? The only one I had is the lighting. I don't know if it's going to, you know, them not having that lighting there, is it going to be a big to-do for security? Is it going to make it more vulnerable or not? Uh, that's the only question I had. So another resident was concerned. And I know that Light. places that are lit up, you can see a glow from a distance. And, well, I know we always talk about it. That's my only question. Right. Have, have you approached the uh, electric company and say, what would it cost to change it to LED? 
I have not, but I can do that. But I mean, there, there's not going to be any changes to the lighting. I'm not even pushing what the lighting you have in your parking lot because that's existing and stuff. Those people that's are aware theirs. of it. But the new lighting, that's all. If it's really uh, going to make your place more vulnerable, obviously you should have it. If it is not going to make that big a difference, I could see not having it. That's all I'm just posing that. Question. And any new lighting is going to be right up against the building itself, which I'm is only going to go out. with the lighting. Yeah. You so. know how light yeah. diffuses. But. but the the current lighting isn't your lighting anyway. That's. It's parking lighting. Parking. Correct. Yeah. Which yeah. is going to stay exactly as it is. Right. All right, so, so the other questions, and you do have it on, your, on the new landscape plan, is, is the plantings in the back for screening. Yep. <coughs> um, copy of that. No changes to the exterior. Security cameras are focused just on the property. Uh, to keep the lighting on, on the property. And the town officials that commented, and I mentioned this last time, the police chief did say that they're happy with them. The security measures you're making, and you have to abide by the CCC, and he's, you're, you're cooperating with him. So that's uh, so that's good. We talked a little about traffic, and um, I, I think we're we're okay that there won't be lines. If there are, um, if it does become an issue, and you need to hire a, <coughs> a police, then that you do with the Deerfield police. If if traffic starts to back up outside of your property. Yeah, and you can certainly make that a condition. So that would be a, certainly a condition. Again, we've seen some the early dispensaries, and I think that's probably not going to happen in the future, but we got to just, just make sure that expense is on you, not on the town. Absolutely. Uh, I'm sure we went over hours of operation <laughs> for the retail. It's yeah. It's in the application. Yeah. Yeah. Can you refresh us uh, after your brain? I believe it was. Don't, don't misspeak. <laughs> I don't want to misspeak. I think it was 10 to 9. I'm pretty certain about that. Or 9 to 10. Or 9 to 10. <laughs> 10 to 10 is what I thought. That's why I think you should look at the application. Yeah, again, I mean, it's in a, um... I think it's in a memo that complicated yeah. it, right? A letter addressing the concerns of... Do we have a... Special permit? Matt has we, it. We have town bylaws about that, don't we? We should know this. We should know this. You mean for businesses, though? Yeah. I, I think it depends on what type of business you're yeah, in, I don't, John. I don't remember yeah. there being any, to be honest with you. Matt, it's in the presentation. Of PowerPoint. Seems like when somebody came in and said their time, we just said okay or or not. We didn't really have anything. Sure, okay. I don't know about that. Twenty-four-seven. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean like, <laughs> come to the farms is twenty-four-seven, right? I don't know. Yeah, I believe it is. Been there too so, I'm just saying, if, if, if we felt it was out of line, then it's out of line, but if we didn't. <clears throat> so 10 o'clock is the, is the latest? Is that what we're... Yeah, 10 o'clock is definitely the latest. All right. Is that a state? No. That's, just, that's what... Realistically. Matt has it here. So that's just your opinion, Mike. That's when they get tired. <laughs> yeah, and there's no more sales. <laughs> Well, let's put that as a condition. That's that's fine to do. No, I was just I know I'm sure we talked about it. I just don't remember. Just I, I, don't, I don't remember. Sure we do. I don't I remember talking about it. So I'm glad you brought it up. What else might we have forgot to talk about? Next. Um, yeah, it was ten to ten. Ten to ten for the retail. Yes. My memory. <laughs> and again, all the retail is on the. Right. Greenfield Roadside. Yeah. Correct. I mean, everything's on the Greenfield Roadside. This is seven days a week. Yes. Any um, any disc any uh, questions, comments from the public? This is still a public hearing. Oh. I guess we warn we warn the public up. All right. <laughs> 
So are we expecting any new information or could we, uh, we have a motion to close the public hearing and uh, move on with our decision? The other thing is, so just to remind people, so this is a site plan review and we are the special permit authority. So this is also for a special permit. A special permit requires super majority vote of the planning board, which would be f five votes. That's correct. And my understanding is that it's the super majority of how many seats are on the, plan on the, on the planning board, okay. not who's here or who's currently on the board. So right now, so... Um, so we have seven seats, so we would need five positive votes. That's correct. Right now we only have six members, so we still need five positive votes for a special permit. And you only get five present tonight. Okay, so I move to close the public hearing and move to the site plan review. A second. Any discussion about closing the public hearing? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? So if public hearing is closed on this, so we can't take any new information, would we like to make any uh, motion on the site plan review and the special permit? Do you want to do them separately? Or yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I move to approve the site plan review for uh, 10 Greenfield Road, Deerfield Naturals, LLC. As submitted. A second. So as submitted, um, we had Without a we had a couple of these comments. So so this is where I want to uh, ask some, some patience as well. So we want to write up this decision properly. And this will be the first decision we're making on a, on a marijuana establishment in Deerfield. So I've asked our town council to help us with that decision, but he can only do so in what what we've decided. But then he'll make sure we go through all of the different uh, points that we've discussed. Um, so, um, so we should name the, the plan that we're talking about. So it's the December 14th site plan. Where there were some upgrades. And then the, the uh, landscape plan from last month. Um, this, is, this is where I wish we had a staff person because I'm not, to tell you the truth, I'm not absolutely comfortable um, that we have all this information in an orderly fashion. So we should have the latest, the most up-to-date site plan. We should have most, the most up-to-date um, landscape plan. What was the date on the landscape plan? We must have that, right? Oh, we don't. 2 14 19. Didn't we have a whole box for this? Oh, yeah, we did. 2 14? 2 14 19. We don't have our science plan for it. This is where I want to get first. So guess... What do you need? There was a whole box of stuff. We have like mm -hmm. four public meetings. Dick, are those boxes still in the office? Let me. What yeah. was the third sheet that you had? The one with that Greenfield Road should be out here when we start our meeting. Let's see. Matt, you mentioned there was a third one that was sent to us. What was that one? Uh, no, it was just a revised site plan and a revised landscaping plan. I mean, I have it if you need it. With the, with the, with the, with the new plantings and stuff. All right. We, we have wanna, someone in the audience who wants to say something, but you can't bring any new information about this program. So, what do you want to? Yeah, let's see, let me see those. I'll just just. It may just be more of a question for town council. I know there was discussion as to whether or not the family daycare versus the or family center versus daycare would be setting precedent. So, I'm a little uncertain as to how the if if there's enough clarity for the precedent that's being set. That's one of the, thank you, that's one of the items that we want to have in our decision so that there is no, no questions. Um, oh, good. So, so what are these two things that, that Tom, Tom Lesser, is that right? Yes. That you gave us today. Uh, the new landscaping plan with the, with the plantings in the back. And that was February 14th of 2019, right? That's what my file says, yep. and it's too small for me to read, to be honest, okay. for the plans. Uh, the, the revision the main, date is the February 6th. plan of December 14th, 2018, right? He said on the drawing it says February 6th, the date that February the plan 6th. was made. Yeah. February 6th, then. On the uh, landscape okay, plan? Correct. Yes. Okay, so that's the 6th. And the signage plan, too, I believe. Well, the I signage you, plan was there you sent to us, too. I say 
I gave you a signage plan and a landscape plan. There's multiple signs here. Were these just for us to look at or? There's just a couple different options that our uh, architect gave us, one with a logo and one without. Which on that, I mean, they just have to be within our bylaws. So yeah, 16 we don't, feet yeah. or 32 yeah. feet, whatever it is. Yeah. So whatever the bylaws yeah, 32 are. square feet. It, we don't. Correct. We There's a note um, saying 32 square feet on there, which is the bylaw. Can you read the do Yeah, the, uh, trying to figure out where it is. Yeah. 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 February 19th, thank you. Is that our last meeting? Yeah. Yeah, February 19th is the one that we are accepting. Yeah. We don't need all these. Right. Uh, Tom, would you like these back? Is there multiple copies? Sure. Oh, yes. That's the one that's dated the 14th of December? Yeah, it's, it was revised January 7th, so that is the one that we want. January 7th right. update. Okay. On the 719 update. Okay. Okay, 2619. Revised February 12th. What was this revised? February 6th. Yeah, that's here. It's February 6th. Because this one, right. they had to change the signs and stuff. Right. But it's primarily the same. And the date on that one is 1719, right? On the that, big one? Which one? No. The landscape one is no, February the, 12th. The, the site, yeah, that's, that, I got that. But then the site plan, which is this one right here. This is February 12th. They're all different dates. Oh, somebody said 1719. Yeah. That, that's... That was one, but then, again. then there's a later one on February. February, what again? 2 12 19. 2 12. And the landscape one was 2 6 19. Got that. So there's just the two then? Yep. Okay. I can't find any additional records. I think you've got everything. Mm -hmm. right. Same thing. Do you want these back as well? Sure. Thank you. All right, so um, this has been a motion to, um, so again, to, to want to put in there that um, in our decision, do we have to, Adam, just to help out, things that we discussed, do we have to kind of read it into the record at the decision time here? So, um, so there are a couple of ways to do this, and it's complicated a bit by the fact that you have both a special permit and a site plan review before you. Right. So we're doing the special permit first. Right. Yeah. Um, but but I, I don't mean so much in terms I mean of the, the sequencing. Plan, I mean in terms of how the decision is rendered. So you, you have you have certain time constraints, some statutory, some under your bylaw, for rendering a decision, for filing the decision with the town clerk, following the date of your vote. Um, so you've got 14 days from the date you vote to file your decision with the town clerk right. um, with respect to the special permit in particular. Um, you've got a lengthy time period after you close the public hearing, 90 days in the special permit context before you actually have to take that vote. You have more stringent requirements for site plan review under your bylaw. You've got a 60-day period uh, okay. under, your, under your, your bylaw. So generally what I recommend in these circumstances is when you close the public hearing, you don't immediately proceed to a vote because you don't have a decision in front of you. So trying to sort of say, well, add this and make sure you add that and then delegate one person to sign the decision and hope that they got it right and that it reflects the decision of the, the majority of the board or super majority of the board is a challenging thing to do. Now that's always not, that, that's not always possible based upon 
time constraints and where you are in the process. So pre presuming that you want to proceed to a vote tonight, I don't know what your time constraints are, but I, I think you're up against them. Um, you, you, I would suggest that you specify what the conditions are. Um, read them into the record so that they're clear. I'll take notes. Your clerk will take notes. And then that gives us something to work off of as we prepare the decision over the next couple of weeks to get it on file with the town clerk before the deadline. Got it? I do, but I do. You feel you could, we could we put all the items into the decision right now? Or do we, and Pat Smith has always said, too, that we should have at least a draft decision in front of us when we're making these decisions. I, I know it slows that things down, takes. but I know. But it also gets it more right. You know, I would say that whatever we do in this one here, we should have some kind of a, a template kind of set up too, so that in the future we know what to do in the future. I don't know if that's possible, Adam, to, so, to have something that, you know, how, how do you cover all instances? I don't No, I, I mean, I think that makes sense. Um, mo most, and, and you have, you have a, a form or, or a template for your decisions. Now, this is a bit different because it's a marijuana establishment. Um, so you're dealing with uh, somewhat different criteria. We do have a template. I don't remember ever seeing one. You have decision templates. We've got special ones that we've done before. Oh, yeah. oh, ones that have been accomplished already. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay, so I see you, what you're saying. So your, your decisions follow with a particular template, identification of uh, information and plans. I guess it's just that we haven't page. done it. Pat Smith did it. So right. We, right. we didn't get, we were involved with it. So we'd have to, we're starting from fresh here. Right, but I've had opportunity. I mean, th th those documents, we have them in Word, the ones that Pat prepared so we okay. have those templates those are what you've used previously okay. uh, un unless and until we decide to rework those templates we'll work within you know that structure okay um, but we'll make the appropriate modifications to it to make it particular to marijuana establishments and not to whatever sort of site plan or, or special permit you previously issued so that's not the challenge is not so much the format the challenge is being sure that in addition to uh, addressing the findings you've also uh, added appropriate conditions so I guess I'm kind of hearing maybe that uh, the next meeting we have that up to available to us and then we finalize it. Is that kind of where we're headed or we, do we finalize it and then write down the decision afterwards? Well, the challenge is I've not been a part of this process thus far. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what number of meeting this is on this application. I don't know how many days you are into, into the time frame you've got under your bylaw. I don't know if you've gotten extensions or if the applicant's willing to grant you an extension for that purpose. So you've got to work within the confines of your bylaw. Now, most applicants, if they know they're getting an approval, are willing to work cooperatively with you to give you a few extra days or weeks to get that approval on hand. Now, every time we continued the meeting, they signed a form. Right, so that's all fine. That, so that, that has no bearing on this time. Well, now we close the public hearing, so now we start the, the, the clock So starts. the 60 days starts today? No, so you've got two time frames. You've got 90 days starting today for the special permit. For the site plan approval, the 60 days runs from the date of application all the way back to the date of application. Now, you've gotten extensions, if indeed you have, at each meeting mm -hmm. through the current meeting. So if you need additional time to draft a decision because you don't want to vote until you have it before you, you need to get a further extension form signed tonight to get you through that next meeting. Okay. If the applicant refuses that, then you've got to vote tonight. So back again one more time. The site plan review is 60 days from application? That's correct. And the special permit is 90 days from today. From close of the public hearing, that's correct. 90 days from close of the public hearing. So you would be more comfortable scheduling another meeting, having this, these, both these decisions drafted, and then at our next meeting vote on them? And we have all the conditions available I would just hate to wait another month to do that uh, and I and I I also yeah we've got five of us tonight and I that, that's um I don't want to risk especially now that we're down to six it gets tougher to get five of us together um, so I you know if we're confident we can get the conditions uh, generally outlined and then we take a week or so working with our attorney to get it spelled out um, you know I think we can do that or then we have two weeks to to file it 
Right. I, I'm not concerned from my perspective yeah. with the two-week time frame. Right. I mean, that, that's enough right. time to draft or review a decision that gets drafted and yeah. get it in the final form. So, so I guess in part of our decision, I'd like to just verbally say where we have our concerns were that they were going to have the shielding and the, um, you know, the arborvitae in the back. If there's any traffic issues, it'll be paid for by the applicant uh, dealing with our local police. That um, and the lighting is all kept on on the grounds. And these are all things we talked about already. These are the things you, you've already approved to. I just like to have them in writing. And that, um, and then how should we put in the decision that we, you know, about about this daycare that we've considered it, or is that just in the minutes of the? That can just be in the minutes of the public hearing. Um, it, it's up to you how you want to, whether you want to state it explicitly or you want to have it just reflected in the minutes. I think it should be reflected in the minutes. I don't think we want to make a... Yeah, I don't think it's part of the decision so much, but mm -hmm. in the minutes we decided that we think it's that that section of our bylaws is... Um, we understand why it's there and it doesn't fit this case. Yep, okay. Basically. That's the note age. Yes. Yeah. 2300. So as long as you reflect that in the minutes, then okay. it doesn't really have... Then we're making the decision based on that prior. Do you, you want to schedule a meeting for the 18th of March? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to schedule another meeting until late April, so that's why I'm happy to make the decision tonight. <laughs> okay. I'm all right with that, too. Yeah. No, as long as we, as long as we okay. take, take have, so those are my three issues, I guess. Um, landscaping, traffic, and um, lighting. Lighting. John, if I could. So my only other comment is, so you require, there are, are two parts to any special permit decision. There are the conditions, and we've just talked about those. Mm -hmm. But there's also the findings of fact you've got to make that justify your issuance of the special permit. Now, um, Section 4660 doesn't specify any standards because it just incorporates by reference the special permit criteria that already exist in your bylaw. So you're familiar with those social, economic, or community needs or certain yeah. proposal, traffic flow and safety uh, is, is addressed. Utilities are adequate, neighborhood character and social structures are protected, impacts to the natural environment are addressed, uh, potential inf fiscal impact is considered. So you ought to um, make findings tonight and do so verbally for the record so that those can also become affirmative findings within the decision itself, mm -hmm. which will justify it if it gets challenged. Mm -hmm. And I'm not suggesting that this one would get challenged, but it's mm -hmm. a good practice to get into for mm -hmm. future well, applications. It has been helpful. So uh, we go through one each step by step. Yeah, but let's do. So we're on this. We're on the site plan review. That's what you. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't. That I think our, we put our conditions for that. Our issues yes, with right. that, and the other site plan review things that we look at, we're all okay with. Which is also some of the same things. Right. Landscape. Mm -hmm. So we're okay with that. All right. So we have a. Uh, we've moved to second. A motion and a motion. second, and we've put these. Uh, the three issues on the table. Um, nothing new, no new information? No, no new information. Okay. Something I'd like you to put in the condition would be the enforcement, either through the police department or the building commissioner's office, for the enforcement, for the lighting, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Because if you just leave it blank, uh, the, I would suggest you put it through the police department because they do this public safety and reviews of the building. So just a comment. I mean, that's, that's a, a good point. We make, sometimes we put these conditions on and then we don't say who's going to enforce it, but it, I would think that means anybody in the town, the town can enforce it. So, but to put it explicitly probably helps too. Right. Um, so. All right, anything else? All those in favor? Of what? Of the site plan, approving the site plan review with these conditions. That's what the motion is. Okay. Second. Aye. 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 Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That's so five zero zero. zero. No. All right. So now we are also the special permit authority for these uh, marijuana establishments. Do you want to go over that list? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Let's just go through that. Section fifty four hundred. These are found in section fifty four hundred. Uh no, that's like time. Sorry. 
uh, special permit is. Uh, 5,300. 5,300. And how many items are there? Two six. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six main items. Six items, okay. So the first one is what? Socioeconomic. So the first one is that the um, special permits may be, grant, may be granted by the special permit granting authority upon its written determination that the benefits of the proposed use outweigh its detrimental impacts on the town and the neighborhood. So if we vote uh, to approve a special permit, then we're saying the benefits outweigh it. And so then some of the specific ones, social, social, economic, and community needs, which are served by the proposal. So we've got, we didn't talk about it much here, but obviously the economic ones are, are increasing the tax base, which is something that the planning board likes to, to see. So, um, and maybe we'll just leave aside this other social. And, and, and how does it, how, how does this all play into the fact that, that the, um, the majority of the people voted for this in, a, in an election? I mean, is that, does that play into this? No. In other words, the community has already stated significantly in favor right. of this to start with. Yeah, so, so maybe but that's so a good way to start it, yeah. Well, it, it's also just the baseline. Then. Yeah. It's no, also just, what? It's a baseline. It's not, it's what it is. We wouldn't even be here if they we hadn't voted. Have to worry about it right, but I'm just saying that we, we, have, we, have, we are required yeah. to go through this because okay. of the people voting. That's yep. one of the main reasons that we, yeah, we don't point. have any leeway on certain items is because of that vote. Good point. Sure. So that the majority of the voters approved marijuana establishments. Yeah. That's right. 5322, traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading. I mean, the parking is all on site. What um, was the number of that first one, by the way? 23, uh, 5321. 5321, okay. 5322, traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading. Parking and loading is all on site. The next one is 5322? Yep. Okay. Yep. You have this. Do you have your card? I have the open. I know. I also have it on here. Um, <laughs> but it looks like I'm texting when I do that. Too. So traffic, <laughs> uh, we don't expect it to be an issue, and if it is, the applicant will take care of it. That's what we said. 5323, adequacy of utilities and other public services. Not much change. Mm -hmm. 5324, neighborhood character and social structures. It's, it's using the same building. It's, so it's an existing, existing uh, mm -hmm. operation, basically. Uh, well, the use is changing drastically from what it was to now. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's and it's totally secured by. The security department and oh, shoot. I, got, I got a question here. So social structures, so so the character looks fine. So the social structure, some people could say, is this good for the social uh, structure of our community? There was a thing I, I did want to ask, and it's not necessarily um, well, it's not site plan review, but it would, I guess, fit under under this is the um, each marijuana establishment is supposed to uh, submit a diversity plan to the town, to the state. And I'm wondering if you guys have done that. We haven't applied yet, so we haven't submitted a diversity plan. Right. We are going to give special preference to people who live in Deerfield as employees. And do we, have you done anything about part of the state's um, diversity plan is also for underserved people, both in, in jobs and in any other kind of benefits that might come out of this. And that's one thing the town should probably think about is what are we going to use the tax money for if this does create other social problems in our town or in society, how do we sort of rectify that or how do we use some of the we benefits be of this? We some plan to the, to the Cannabis Control Commission with regard to that issue but it hasn't been defined yet. And then I think one of the other big things they talk about is diversity is, is uh, 
minorities, people of color, other, other uh, folks like that being involved in the ownership or, or employment of it. Well, that's certainly a big issue statewide. Yeah. In yeah, terms you, of how many people have applied, and obviously uh, the people who are applying are not diverse. Um, but that has to do with the people who are applying in terms of diversity with the Cannabis Control Commission. That, that, that doesn't have to do with the people who are employed. The diversity had to do with trying to get more people of color, more people who are socially disadvantaged or economically disadvantaged to be able to be, become the applicant. That and I would suggest issues. that applicants could find partners and bring people into their, into their business as well. So is there any attempt at that or? Well, that gives you a leg up before the Cannabis Control Commission your application goes to the front of the line if you're in that category. Not only a leg up necessarily, but the right thing to do uh, is part of the reason why people in Massachusetts voted for it, I think. So again, that, that to me is social structure that fits into this category and special permit. Right, for, right now we, we can't give you anything definitive in terms of the people who are running the business. All we can tell you is that in terms of sort of the economics and the social structure of Deerfield, we're going to give priority to people in Deerfield. So I understand that doesn't exactly address the issue that you're addressing, which is oh, how about giving a certain number of jobs to people who are challenged in one way or another economically or physically. Yeah. And that's something that they'll be looking into, but they haven't formulated a plan as of yet. All right, well, that's something we'd love to support and encourage. So, <coughs> so 5324, you've got that? I've got it written down here. I'm, uh, you, you're talking about diversity and? Well, neighborhood character and social structures. So neighborhood character, it's kind of out on Route 5 and 10, so it's not a lot of neighborhood. But right. social structure would be to bring in more diversity. Mm -hmm. Which, what yeah. they're saying is they haven't. And we're in, we're in a commercial zone. So yeah. that that's not residential or you know what I mean it's yeah it's not really a neighborhood. So commercial zone would be then 5325 is impacts on the natural environment again it's if they plant it's a lot of lilac sale. bushes to offset <laughs> the smell it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, only good for the springtime kit. It's an idea. We won't put it in the decision, but it's well, better than pickles, I guess. Uh, well, it depends who you are. How about the perfume from the Yankee Candle? So anyway, mostly the impact's not going to be negative. It's not going to. It, it seems like it's not going to change the natural environment that much. It's all, the structures are all there, and so it's a good use of a. It's a reuse of a building, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's not. You know. Yeah. Reuse. The only, and I don't know. It's the. They say the smell it could give off, but I think they have controls Outer for that. Control. Odor control. Yep. But well, that's a. That's a state, that's a CCC thing. I that's know, but I'm just saying that would be yeah. the only thing. Otherwise, yeah. you're right, John, there isn't going to be that big of an impact. The building exists. That would be the only other change, really. You know, the plastic is off an odor. Maybe it did. I don't know. Uh -huh. 5326 is a potential fiscal impact, including impact on town services, tax base, and employment. Again, this is a new business. None of us, you know, everybody's kind of wondering what's going to happen. But at this point, and it's gone through the host community thing, and I think... The town's hoping that this has a positive economic impact, that taxes are going to outweigh the services provided. Is that yeah. we, so we are? Yes. You mentioned that earlier, John, and I don't think we're really here to try to generate tax dollars. It's really to make sure the quality of life is good in Deerfield. So just because it's going to bring in tax dollars, that isn't a reason to vote for it. Oh, that's, but I think it's just one of the... I, I know. I'm just saying, but that's... You know, the economic impact it's going to have on town, you know, uh, and John mentioned tax dollars. Uh, I'm not here to vote for tax dollars. If it brings them in, it's great, and it helps all of us. That's really a good thing, but that's not the only reason why we're here. Oh, no. uh, economically, we also had, the, as Tom said, we give in priority to uh, residents of Deerfield and Franklin County, and so that the jobs issue is not really tax dollars, but it is another um, economic benefit of the business coming forward. I'm running for re-election in two months, so I have to... I'll vote I don't, for you, I don't, I don't want to raise residence taxes, okay? Just so you know, you heard that. <laughs> All right, so those are, the, those are the items, Paul, that we have. Uh, okay, I, I, I know where to find them as well, so... 
that there you go. I'm send it back to him. Fill most of those. Uh, here. It does here. All right. So do we have a, a motion? Let's do what? To approve a special permit. Sorry. Oh. This I, is this is going through the special permit. Yes. 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 I, I move to so approve the special permit for Deerfield Naturals LLC at 10 Greenfield Road. Okay. Second. And that's at the same conditions. Same with. Motion. With the same conditions as the site plan, yes, correct. and with those comments for the yes. Second. Yes. Any discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Five zero zero. Okay. So that makes it a legal special permit. Good. Thank you for. Uh, attending all these meetings. Thank you to the public for participating in all the public hearings. We will uh, draft a decision, um, and I believe in the next two weeks we'll file that with our town clerk, and then you can get, get access to that. Are we thinking, at you. this time, are we planning on having another meeting within two weeks, or what's the, you know, what was oh, the? We're done. No, 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 I know, but I mean, when are we going to meet and sign this? And so, so, John, that, that's, oh, a, that's yeah. a question. So I don't know whether there, there are some boards that provide sort of blanket authority in the form of a vote. Sometimes they do it once a year to the chairman or some other representative to sign decisions on behalf of the board, uh, confirm that they're consistent with the vote of the board. If you haven't done that as, in a general sense, it probably makes sense at this point for you to just take that vote, designating one of you with the authority to review and ensure that the decision is simply consistent, not make additions to it, not modify it to add anything that has not been discussed, but just ensure that it's consistent. Are, are, we, are we okay to email the, the, the draft decision, draft decision yeah, around and then decision. one person come in and sign for it? Well, I can email the draft decision around, but the challenge is I can't email it around to take a whole bunch of feedback from all of you and then and then clean, clean it up and then send the version up no, to the no, chair. No. That's a violation of the open meeting law. I can send it once the draft is finalized. I can send it out to everybody, um, but ultimately, you need if you're going to have one person sign it on behalf of the board. The other option is you all come in individually over the next two weeks, probably toward the end of the next two weeks once the decision is finalized, mm -hmm. and get in here on short notice and sign it. And you all, you, you would all have to do that, whatever whatever you prefer. So I like making a motion to have one person sign it without making changes, you know, as we understand it. But then we all should, then the clerk would keep it and we all still come in and sign it after, maybe it after it's filed. Is that still okay, Adam, or does it not matter then? I guess? Um, it, it doesn't matter then. I mean, you certainly could, you certainly could, but that actually raises more questions than that yeah. because when did it become final? Okay. And so I, I either say everybody come in and sign it and get it in within 14 days or one person sign it and get it in within 14 days. Well, I, I move to let John wait sign for all of us that way. Uh, yeah, He'll go to jail with the feds coming. Out. <laughs> <laughs> but would love that. that. John will love that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How, how's You're your next couple weeks? I, I'm gone. Um, oh I'm done. no. <laughs> I can see what this I, I'm is. Out the last half of March. When do you leave? On the fifteenth. Oh, I leave the eighteenth. All right. So we can do this right early next week. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'll take it. Okay. Okay. So do we make a motion? I made a motion. Do you second it? I second it. All okay. right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So Five, Kip made the motion. Rachel seconded it. And the motion is to, to give John, John the authority, Wade the authority, the authority to sign, sign on behalf of the board. Correct. Okay. I'm just looking to make sure it was the 15th. I'm leaving on. So was that, a, was that no, five zero zero? the yes. vote? Yes. Five, zero. Zero. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Why don't we take and put this all together? I know. You can check. Put it somewhere in there. This. Don? We're going to momentarily move to 198 mil. I've never seen a little group of two. Let's organize here a little bit. Can I see this? Mm-hmm. I fold these, do you? No, they couldn't. Oh.
some paperwork on the next one. Mass. It seems to be about 50 50 on it. What's that? It seems to be 50 50 pronouncing it either way. Sun's mess. <laughs> Very loud near that mic. It's, that's the way it's written. I'd like to open the public Sun's hearing, the continuation of the public hearing for a site plan review and special permit application uh, for 198 Mill Village Road from Sun Mass Inc which has submitted a proposal for a cannabis cultivation facility on land currently used for agricultural purposes located at 198 Mill Village Road and including the budding properties at 196 and 200 Mill Village Road, which is on Assessor's Map 94, lots 459, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Opening this hearing at uh, 845, thank you for your patience. Sorry, we, we scheduled this at Seven, in case the other one went really quickly, obviously it didn't, but I think this one might go quicker because we there talked was about important work being done and talked about some of the same issues we might talk about here. Sure. So we've had several um, public hearings on on this, and this is now just, just the cultivation. It's in existing greenhouses, and they're going to build a new building. The last meeting, and I think the meeting before that, we also heard from our, um, our peer review person from... Um, Wesson and Sampson, who looked at stormwater and uh, those those kind of issues, and said it all seems to seem to work from their point of view. We had a good report on that last last meeting. Um, and on that note, since that time, we've incorporated all of the peer review comments into new plans. So we do have new plans, new dated yes. plans. That's You've fantastic. received them electronically, and I have two card copies here. Excellent. Excellent. That's good. To are inclusive of all the sheets in the site plan um, updated based on the peer review comments. It doesn't include any of the miscellaneous figures like the truck turning that we, that we gave you for demonstration, but all of the proposed work is in there. And what's the update date on it? Uh, uh, February 25th. Uh, we submitted that to the peer reviewer and received back a letter, which I believe you were copied on, uh, that says all comments from the 214-19 peer review have been addressed. No new comments. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, so we did receive a letter from our peer review person. And Joe's not here. We Kim told him he didn't need to be here. Give him the night off. Give him the night off. <laughs> so one of the main outstanding items we had um, was regarding the use of I, I, the use of APR land, ag preservation land, as part of the property that is being and um, being used for the cultivation, and and that property is 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 needed in order to meet our bylaw of pervious surface that only uh, only thirty percent can be impervious, and so they needed to add sort of land to the property. We talked about making it all one property, which is what we have been working under that assumption, even though I don't think it's done yet, but that's the plan. Correct. It, it can't be done because the property has not changed hands. Mm -hmm. um, that per purchase and sale is contingent on an approval of the permit, mm -hmm. um, but we have uh, given you a draft, which uh, we, we have prepared a draft of the, the consolidation plan, um, which uh, we would propose a condition of approval would be that we come back with an A and R to merge those lots uh, to the planning board and then record it at the registry. All right. So before I ask our attorney to weigh in on this, is there any other additional information from from last? Sun's mass. 
Any representative from SunsMass, other than? And did you do you need everybody's names again, or are you good? Or? Well, I've got Chris um, Chamberlain, Dick Evans, Don Dubinville, and who else are Dubendorf. we? Dubendorf. 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 I'm sorry, Dubendorf. It's a mouthful. <laughs> I apologize. D U B I N. No, D U B E N D O R F. Okay, wait a minute. And we do have it spelled that way on many documents do, and yeah. other documents. Yeah. It's it's a little different. But sorry, it's close enough. It gets tortured often. D O R F, as in Frank. I'll have to star that so that I change it to that everywhere. So you don't have any other changes that we don't know about? Um, so uh, last Thursday we were approved by the Conservation Commission. Okay. Uh, they did impose, well, there were actually two decisions by the Conservation Commission. The first one is an enforcement action, which technically is separate from this project, uh, which requires uh, the replication of wetland because there is some apparent historical wetland that was uh, altered. That uh, has been imposed and will be done at some point this year, regardless of whether this project goes forward. And what date was that? Um, that was the 28th, February 28th. And um, who's the enforcement agent for that? Who is the enforcement agency? Who follows up on that one? Uh, the Conservation Commission. They uh, do? Right. Oh, okay. They're, they are implementing the DEP regulations, but okay. it's the, ultimately the Conservation Commission that is the enforcer. All right, good. Um, and then, as a separate action, they approved our notice of intent for work in the buffer zone uh, toward the rear of the site because we do have that wetland there uh, with um, conditions to add some uh, enhancement plantings and also do some uh, invasive species mitigation uh, in the buffer area around the wetland. Um, does not change any of the built work, any of the fences, any of the uh, building or anything like that, uh, but there will be uh, some uh, landscape work um, that we need to uh, incorporate. Again, that, that condition was imposed on Thursday, so that was uh, after the date of the plans on the 25th. Hmm. All right, so one of the, so when we left, we talked about this, uh, how does APR land fits into this? And I've had cons uh, discussions with some folks at MDAR and, and our attorney has looked into it. So Adam, could you talk to the question of, is there any issues, any problems with uh, using this APR land as part of the property that will be owned by the marijuana cultivation? Sure, so I, I don't think that there is. Um, let, me, let me talk first to a question that I think has been answered already. Uh, but the, how this first arose, which was the question of whether the, the properties could be combined such that only a portion of the resultant lot would have uh, the restriction on it. Um, as a general concept, there's nothing that prohibits a landowner that has acquired multiple properties that are then in common ownership from merging those properties. Uh, I heard a reference uh, made to an a &R plan, and certainly they can do it that way if they prefer to get the planning board to sign an A&R plan that eliminates interior lot lines, they can do that. Truth be told, by statute, they don't need to come to the planning board and get an A&R plan. They can just record what's called an 81X plan, surveyor's plan. It eliminates interior lot lines. Uh, developers do it with some frequency when they've got multiple parcels that they acquire uh, from individual landowners, which they then seek to combine to redevelop with a single project. So an 81X plan, also known as a perimeter plan, can be recorded that simply is the, uh, the darker exterior outline of the property that you see on the easel uh, and therefore eliminates the interior lot lines. I had expressed a, a concern to, to, to one of you, I think, um, a couple of months ago when this issue was first presented about whether or not um, uh, MDAR would have any issue with that um, where there would thereafter be a restriction on only a portion of the resultant lot and whether they, they would have issue because that portion was not uh, well-defined. Um, it doesn't appear, um, you know, that they that, that they would based upon the submittals that have been made so far. I understand that they have not offered an opinion. We have um, some other uh, data or information been supplied by the applicant, including a couple of letters that suggest that that's not a problem. There's certainly nothing. I reviewed the, the APR. I don't see anything in here that would prevent um, the, the restriction from being on just a portion of the resultant lot. So then the question becomes, okay, can that portion of the resultant lot that is subject to the restriction be used to satisfy zoning requirements? And that question is actually not that unique. Maybe it's unique in the APR context, but there are other types of restrictions that get placed on property all the time, conservation restrictions, for example. Um, and so it arises in that context. If you've got a conservation restriction on a portion of your property uh, and you've got a, you're proposing to construct a single family home, can you use the area within the restriction to satisfy a lot area requirements or 
um, lot coverage requirements or, or, or maximums? And the general rule is yes, unless it's inconsistent with the language of the restriction. Um, I will say as a general rule, planning boards don't interpret restrictions. Planning boards don't look to documents of record at the Registry of Deeds. It's not really within your purview. The exception to the rule is in those circumstances where looking at those documents is sort of germane to the question that's before you. And so if the question before you is, by approving this, are we going to um, place the property out of compliance, or, or does something that is of record affect the zoning potential future zoning compliance of the property? That's the exception to the rule. That gives you the ability as a planning board to then dig a bit deeper. So the applicants presented a copy of the APR. I've had occasion to review it. Um, it does not address this head on. There's no specific provision. I've seen this in some restrictions of other kinds that say um, the area of land that is subject to the restriction uh, may be uh, submitted to passive use, including compliance with zoning. Uh, I've seen that before. I've written that before in restrictions that I've crafted. Um, that's not in here. But what is in here is uh, a whole list of prohibitions. Um, prohibitions on the land that is subject to the restriction. And it all speaks about active use. No building, residential dwelling, tennis court, swimming pool, uh, or, or other temporary or permanent structure can be placed on the restricted land. Uh, no loam, peat, gravel, soil, sand, rock, or other uh, mineral resources can be excavated from the restricted land. Uh, talks about storage of, of, of uh, trash and refuse and vehicles. Um, there are some uh, more expansive uh, prohibitions. No use shall be made of the premises, which is or may be inconsistent with the intent of this grant, being the perpetual protection um, uh, protection and pres preservation of agricultural lands as determined by the Agricultural Lands Preservation Committee. Uh, the premises shall be conveyed as a unit. No subdivision or division of the premises uh, shall be permitted except in accordance uh, with the procedure set forth uh, herein. No, no use or development of the premises other than for agricultural purposes shall be permitted. So there's some, there's some flexibility here. There, there's some um, broad language that uh, you could try to interpret to, to, to mean that they can't use it for, for zoning compliance, but I, I think in my professional opinion that would be a stretch here. I think if there was an intention that this not be used for purposes of calculating compliance with dimensional requirements under the zoning bylaw, it would say so. I've seen, it, I've seen that language in <coughs> restrictions before when that is the intention. Um, but the idea that it would be used for purposes of satisfying area requirements or lot coverage requirements, I don't see anything in the restriction that prohibits that. Any questions about that? The other, just the other quick information is that, uh, again, some correspondence with folks at, at the Mass Department of Ag, they won't, they won't make an, uh, an opinion on this. And, and, and I think basically it's, it's what Adam said. It doesn't, nothing says you can't use it for this purpose. So they're not going to say you, you can't can. use it for this purpose. Oh, they're, they're not going to say you can't can. either, but they're not going to say you can't. Um, and again, this is just, this is, the, this is new as far as marijuana use. Um, and the owner of the property being a marijuana cultivation company. Um, but Proposed. And, and I think what's important is that there's no proposal to use the APR land for any, any active use connected with a marijuana establishment. Right. It's being used right. in a passive way, really for technical compliance with your bylaw. So, you know, looking at, and I understand that, that we've got to sort of hypothesize here because we don't know what MDAR may say, but for it to determine that there's a non-compliance with the restriction, they would need to find that there's something intended to be protected by the restriction that won't be protected by virtue of a building going on or, or use uh, being undertaken on a property that is an adjacent property essentially to the land that is subject to the restriction. So I, I just find that to be um, unlikely, frankly. Adam, I just had a question. When, when you talked earlier about that 81X, that, uh, the property ends up having no lot lines and that's, that's the bottom line. It's just the same thing as the A&R, right? So you can't leave the lot lines there on the deeds, or can you? You have to redraw. Um, so, you know, one th the one thing about registry of deeds is that once a document's recorded, it's recorded forever. You can't take documents off record. So 
um, you know, what exists in the registry of deeds today, uh, a history of separate ownership and separate deed descriptions will continue to exist. Moving forward, it's really the applicant's choice if they, uh, let's say that they receive deeds from multiple owners um, and, and then they ultimately convey, the, the recipient then conveys it to a second LLC. They can maintain the separate descriptions or they can combine them into one new meets and bounds description. That's really irrelevant to the question of whether for purposes of Hold the on, plans wait. of record. So say this again, slow it down. So sure. they don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't well, know. I know, I know, I'm trying, I'm trying to figure so, out. So, okay, what I, I had understood is that they have to redraw the lot lines, so. That's correct. Okay, so, so what is that different from what you're saying? So I've seen circumstances where you've got a plan of record that shows a swath of land, 10 acres, rectangular parcel. Boom, 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 okay. One, okay. Then you look at the deed and the deed says, the following parcels, parcel one, parcel two, parcel three, right, parcel four, because that's what the history established as right. this property. You don't necessarily need to change the deed descriptions, but you need to have a plan on record that erases the, the interior lot lines. The only reason I differentiated between A and R is the concept of an, an approval not required plan is you are dividing land in a manner that doesn't require a subdivision approval. But it is, it is the dividing up, the carving up of land into multiple lots or parcels that requires the A&R endorsement. When you're doing it in the reverse, mm -hmm. when you've got multiple parcels or lots and you're eliminating interior lot lines, uh, 4181X says you don't need to go to the planning board. The planning board has no function there. You just eliminate those lot lines and put a new record on, uh, a new plan on record at the registry. But of we need that because of, the, because of the regulations that we have about um, percentage of impermeable surface so we need to know that that yeah we just need to guarantee that right? that property will stay in the shape it is now and you can include that as a condition of your decision okay. by virtue of approving this project you're approving it based upon the plan that's been submitted the commitment that the plan will be combined and that that entire acreage is the land that will be will be uh, that will accompany the proposed use so, so in a condition can you put a restriction that it can never be subdivided that's pretty, uh, to me, it seems like a pretty that, Well, if you, if, you change, if you have a change of use and it doesn't need it, I suppose you could, couldn't you? Yeah. My point is, is that how do we guarantee that it stays that way? You know, two years, say everything goes right. through and two or three years from now, they decide, yes. well, we're going to draw the, that line back have. and sell that off. Well, because they, they needed to comply with zoning. Then they would be out of compliance. And so you... Uh, I wouldn't recommend, because I think it causes confusion, that you include a no subdivision uh, condition in your decision. Whenever you approve a project, if I want to build my single family home, and let's say in this imaginary world that you need site plan approval for a single family home, and I come in to get site plan approval for my single family home on one acre, and you give me site plan approval, and I've got an exactly a one acre lot, there's no condition in there that says you may never subdivide, but if tomorrow I divide off a 10,000 square foot portion of that property and convey it away, I've just rendered my house illegal. Right, right, right. Mm. So if they're, if they're required to utilize this APR land for purposes of meeting your dimensional standards, they can't divide it off in the future without rendering their property unlawful unless town meeting decides in five years to reduce the lot area or lot coverage requirements and suddenly they don't need the, they don't need the additional space anymore at that point they could carve it up the same way that any other property owner could and that would have nothing to do with marijuana that has to do with any use. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. correct because kip we've had people come in and want to subdivide and you can't make it right non less right. non conforming right. right. so that's what would happen yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and so yes. if this property has to stay in the same under the same ownership. That's, I guess, what that's we correct. That, that mm -hmm. just has to be correct. correct. But, and in, in this case, we'd have a conforming lot. So if we made any change to cause it to be non conforming, that right. you, you'd reject that. Right. right. It, would, it would actually render it not non conforming, it would render it illegal. Right. On the APR restrictions or whatever, I would have thought they would have just said this is what you can do with the land and not list what you couldn't do because there's probably a zillion things you can't do with it. Now, can you put a structure up on the APR land? If it's related to the agricultural use of the land, you can. There, there's, a, there's a provision that addresses it. I will say that this is how restrictions are generally drafted, all sorts of restrictions. Again, uh, uh, agricultural preservation. I've seen architectural restrictions, con uh, uh, CONCOM uh, restrictions with respect to, to um, uh, conservation land. Um, they're generally structured in a way where they list all the restricted uh, uses, prohibited uses of the land. Um, but there are provisions here that allow for the construction or placing of buildings or structures for agricultural purposes only 
including buildings for related retail sales, structures for housing seasonal agricultural employees, or other agriculture related purposes, all subject to the prior written approval of the grantee. So we'll say they want to expand their business, put more greenhouses up on it. That's permittable on that APR parcel. Correct. So the, the, the challenge here and in, in the interplay between the, the agricultural land and the land that is now subject to uh, or potentially will be available for use as a marijuana establishment is that the agricultural land benefits from the Chapter 40A Section 3 protections that are afforded agricultural uses. So in addition to you know, being restricted by the, by the APR. So there is this permission for the construction or placing of buildings or structures, as I just described, that have some relationship to the agricultural use. There could be a proposal to attempt to use the land for that purpose. Um, you would then, I presume, respond and say, no, that land was necessary to satisfy the, uh, the, the lot area or lot coverage requirements for purposes of the marijuana establishment. The applicant may, may then say, yeah, but we're subject to the agricultural protections under 40A3, and you can only reasonably apply your, your zoning bylaw, and you'd end up in a little bit of a back and forth. I think by papering the trail here and by making it very clear in your decision that the intent is that that agricultural land um, you know, not be developed because it's needed for purposes of satisfying the lot coverage requirement, um, you, you provide some future protection in that regard. But whenever 40A3 comes into the mix, yeah, you're you know, never fully protected. I think protected. there's a thing that you can't grow marijuana on APR land, but we'll say okay. they right. wanted to put some other type of farm structure on that uh, because we're using that for yeah. coverage, like, you know, uh, impervious. impervious yeah. So they couldn't make it come out, you know, but, go over, yeah. exceed that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. And, and I'm not opposed to this, but I, I like the way you phrase it, the technical compliance. And, and that was a concern of mine as well, because if that parcel that's in APR is going to be, continue to be farmed, and the, the folks that are now growing flowers are selling out, but they're going to have a long-term lease or whatever arrangements. Now, they want to put up some big greenhouses over there, not for marijuana, but for their flowers it kind of circumvents the whole idea of adding it. Well, they couldn't yeah. exceed the 30% yeah, right. cap. That's yeah. what that question well, I, I sort of asked. I understand that. And that's why I said to some extent it goes good. to how you craft your decision, Excuse because you. I appreciate that they couldn't exceed the 30%, but they're going to, uh, by them, I'm not referring to the applicant. I'm referring really to some future user of the agricultural land. They're going to argue that they can exceed the 30%. They're going to argue that they're an agricultural use, and so zoning doesn't apply to them. That they have greater flexibility under 40A3. You can't unreasonably apply the otherwise applicable standards because they're entitled to a zoning exemption by statute. So I, I think the clearer you are in your decision that that land is being used to satisfy the lot coverage, the, the, the area necessary to meet lot coverage requirements for a non 40A3 and non protected use, i.e., the marijuana establishment, the better you position yourselves in the future if there were to be that request with respect to the APR land to deny it. And I like the way you said it because now they can come in and argue the point that they can exceed it because it's not set up for it, but yet we're letting them. Um, Count it in so they can build this, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like uh, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it comes at me from another point of view. I mean, through the 40 something years I've lived in town, I, I sure spent an awful lot of money. I could have bought some nice vehicles and stuff to protect open fields and farmlands, you know, and sometimes not even by a choice. It's community preservation funds. You've got to pay this. You got So they take your money and to protect these things, and, and now we're in a situation like this that, you know, so whatever we need to do, I think we need to do to protect it, if the, it's the, through our written decision or whatever. The, the agricultural nature of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But isn't the state's APR still protected? Right, but like you said, if they wanted to come in and put up Greenhouses for flowers, you know, that to me that's not open fields. I mean, it's a greenhouse is a greenhouse, but it's not open fields anymore. Okay. You know? Can I, can I add to that? Yeah. The investment of a greenhouse is substantial. So for us to do that when there's a limited lease on that, would not be. Doesn't make it doesn't sense. Doesn't make any sense, right? You see what I mean? I mean, 
we no. have, at that point, we don't own that property, so why would I put it on debt? No. So our intent certainly is oh. not on that, and in the well, future is on right. No, and I think what we're, we're yeah. not protecting, a, we're not protecting right. against you. We're yeah. looking at the property with whatever Understand. value. Oh, and, wow, that's really loud. <laughs> uh, uh, and I would add that if there were no APR on that land, you face the same issue. Same, exactly. Oh, I, I understand, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but from from my point of view, is that I want to I want to ensure the best of our ability that it's going to stay open and that you know to to your response I mean you know in business doesn't matter if you had a 99 year lease you know God I hope you live another 99 <laughs> years but the chances are, are pretty slim so you know you can put up a greenhouse and write it off and so it, it's not inconceivable people build multi million billion dollar casinos on lease land but you know but from what I was saying is that. You know, I, like a lot of people in town, really cherish our open space and that we've not always voluntarily had to pay a lot of money to see this. You know, we've paid farmers uh, millions of dollars in our community to do this. And I sure would hate to see, even though I understand greenhouses or potato storage or whatever, I'd, I'd, I'd really like rather see the open space instead of that. But Well, uh, I, just, I just add, this APR is not an open space. Restriction. This is an agricultural preservation right. restriction. Right. Right. So it's it it preserves the land for ag use. Right. And and importantly, I, th I think uh, town council mentioned the building of structures on that related to the agricultural use have to be are subject to MDAR's approval. Right. So there's an another layer, and they're enforcing. Yep. That APR. It's not an open space uh, restriction. It, it is a straightforward ag preservation piece. Right. I get it. So it's different from, right. from yep. open space pieces. No, and if somebody wanted to build something on that property, though, they'd still have to go back to tell that the whole property had the right impervious. It, it, right. They would still be subject right. to the bylaws yeah. requirement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the, the yep. agricultural structure could be allowed, but it could then render the marijuana, marijuana. greenhouse illegal. Illegal. That's right. right. Yeah, okay. That's Adam the said they could right. argue that point because it has the ag agricultural thing. You could so argue that's... that point on their side, but you couldn't argue it on the other side if it renders you illegal. That's the point. I, I yeah, know what you're saying, but that's what he said. And I said, well, you can't have your cake and eat it too. So. We... And that's why we structured the, the decision the right way. I mean, I, I, my only point in that regard is whenever you're dealing with, with 40A Section 3 and the zoning exemptions, um, they're interpreted rather broadly. and. Um, the, the tendency of the courts has been to remove the authority of municipal governments, planning boards in particular, um, to impose conditions or even to apply the otherwise applicable standards in your bylaw if it uh, prohibits the religious or educational or agricultural use of the property. So we would just want to be very clear that, you know, that, space, that, that additional area is necessary for this non-protected, non-exempt use to be permissible and that while in the future efforts could be made to develop the APR land, and while those efforts would be within the confines of 48.3 subject to waiver, they'd, they'd render this project unlawful, and therefore they're prohibited. And we can structure that in, in, as a condition of the decision. Yes. I, I can see this scenario happening multiple times in our community. It's not gonna, it could not, work out so well for us. Do you think it's already happened maybe? I mean, it's, No, it's where, where somebody doesn't have enough land right. to develop what they want and going right. to an adjacent farmer yeah, yeah. saying, I will give you, yeah. I will buy that for $500,000 and yeah. give you a free lease for the next 100 years. But the, the, so I think I tried to explain this to somebody. So, but the purpose of that impervious service percentage is so that your town stays pervious state. well right. also just well, stays right. Right. Uh, you know like water moves through from sure. sky <laughs> to ground so it's not necessarily to get around something it's actually you, you and we could change that we could change we could look at the bylaws and change that percentage the other thing we talked about was change mm -hmm. this is nothing to do with your project but removing wetlands from that oh, right. mm -hmm. that that you know saying uh, no that doesn't actually count you got to count some more other land um, actually, we're, we're moving APR land. We could do that. That's not in our current, but we could, and, and that would kind of okay. push a little bit. I think that's. But I know what Kip is saying yeah. because there's a lot of APR land. Yeah. And well, we'll say another 
I know it doesn't have to be a farmer. It could be somebody with just some property. Yeah. But, but it doesn't even have covered. to. To that point, it doesn't even have to be APR land. It could just be a farmer could have in 61A. Right. You know, anything. And, you know, but my point is that allowing uh, a business to buy the farmland, the farmer gets a bunch of money and still he gets to use it for the rest of his life, you know. And, and it, the only purpose of that was to satisfy a bylaw. You know, that, like Adam said, the technical compliance, but, okay. oh well. The other, I think part of the other reason why this is, is becoming an issue here is because this is uh, residential agriculture and mm -hmm. yeah. only marijuana cultivation is allowed there. Right. So when you say business out in residential agriculture, that's not going to happen that often, actually. Well, this is like a special it? circumstance. And because our, we, have, we only allow for 30% mm -hmm. impervious surface in RA, whereas in commercial we allow for a lot more. Right. But, so I'm just, like as these attorneys have said in Adam, he says, you know, the APR is a different framework. So what they're doing is they're selling both parcels of land to one individual, regardless of how they are, correct? So if you have a section of the road where you have a piece of land here and then you have more farmland in the back, it's the same thing. If one person owns that all, it doesn't have to be the same. Yeah. It's the total square footage and you're only using it for technical compliance with a pervious surf, impervious surf. <clears throat> so, but anyways. Uh, yeah, we don't want to kill this no. topic. Uh, uh, just, if I could, just a second. If the APR was intended to uh, be clear on that point, it would have been. I have seen, as uh, town council said, I have seen yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. restrictions provide real clarity on, on that question. This one does not, and that bundle of rights that was sold by the then owner was evaluated and, and they got paid for it. They, they didn't give up rights that they that Correct. weren't in the document and for them to be imposed after the fact isn't quite fair. I understand the concern but I think you can address it straightforwardly in your in your decision and that's quite comfortable with us that we've we've got a 30 percent uh, pervious coverage ratio here we've got to comply with it and that land satisfies this use that is not a protected Section 3 use. So we're, we're comfortable with all that. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we're I hear what you're saying. Yeah, where I was going with that is if somebody has four acres of land and they want to put in a condominium project and they're going to cover 60% of it because they're going to cluster it all together, they go to the farmer next door, oh, we're going to buy 20 acres of your land. We're not going to build anything there. It's something if you're if that's a concern, I yeah. think you've got to address that in bylaw and in yeah. the way you behave with these instruments and the yeah. input you give to MDAR. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that I, I really I think that's the case. I hear the concern. Yeah. I hear it. Yeah. Any other uh, public comments on on um, on this APR on this property issue? I just want to. All right, do we have any other comments on that or we can... I just can't, like, no. we went through this with another state agency. They wouldn't give us a ruling right. and then it. we vote and then they still, they say they had it, but they didn't have it. And why won't they just say yes, it's okay <laughs> or no, it's not okay? Because they're, they're telling us that's what we need to do. But then, if we do the wrong thing, they can say, well, you know, you shouldn't have done that. Well, actually, that's, <laughs> that's what we, we talked about. Is there a way that we can put a condition? Because, again, we don't enforce the APR. That's yeah, not our rule. How can you do that to them? They're going to go so, invest well, millions of dollars or whatever. So Adam, you're going to put a condition on when they can say, no, oh, it's not, not okay. In this room. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> I don't think so. What, do you think there's a way that we could sort of protect our ourselves so so I mean I, I think you're protected I don't think there's a necessity to protect yourselves but I understand the concern so could you include a condition that um, provided you know in, in the interest of sort of a belt and suspenders approach um, you know provided some additional protection sure um, in fact the applicant in, in some email correspondence has proposed a condition and I, I think it could be worded like this it could be worded somewhat differently um, I'll just read um, from from uh, Dick's, e Dick's email. The, the board notes that the three agricultural parcels designated four, five, and nine on the assessor's map are under an agricultural preservation restriction and takes no position as to the impact of the applicant's proposed use or this decision on the said APR or the agricultural use of the parcel so protected. And then he goes on to say, observing that said impact is not within the criteria for consideration and that enforcement of APRs is beyond the purview of this board. 
you could see, I don't know whether you need to include the last part or not. I, I would concede that it's not generally within the purview, although there are exceptions, as I said, if it goes to the heart of the issue that is before the board. But I think you could include a condition with this wording or similar wording that simply acknowledges that you know, you're issuing this decision based upon and premised on a conclusion reached that you know, there's nothing in the APR that prohibits this and that should, should um, MDAR you know, decide differently that the applicant will be bound by MDAR's decision. We're at risk. We would be at risk at that point. Right. I mean, they've got to comply regardless of what this board says or doesn't say. If MDAR determines that they're out of compliance with the, with the APR, I, then they can't proceed with the project. Right. Yeah. Um, and we do have uh, draft conditions that we're going to uh, give to you as our suggestion. One of them includes an obligation for us to uh, notify the board if we receive any correspondence from MDAR uh, regarding any kind of violation with the, uh, with the APR. It just doesn't make sense that they don't weigh in on it before. Why? It just doesn't. That's Massachusetts, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, but now, I, you're, it's, it's a not, it's a it's fair complaint. Too, right? It's a fair complaint. I, I, I'm not sure there's much to be done about that. It's a <laughs> a common agency behavior, mm -hmm. not to issue advisory opinions. Yeah. CYA. And when they do it, they do it in formal ways. I think. Uh, Department of Labor does on some national heritage. Yeah, yeah, there's some, but but for the most part, it's not it's not a service that they provide citizens. You would and think it would board. be. I know what you're saying. I hear you. I hear you, and I I I understand the concern. Now, like they mentioned it, it this land was APR so many years ago, and now land that's APR now they have different restrictions. So now. If this was done just recently, would that would would that what we're doing going to propose would that be a restriction on a new APR piece of property? That it's, it's possible that it could be language in a new APR that would prohibit this, but there isn't in this one. Right, but so their mindset has changed a little bit. They didn't get compensated like you're saying, Don. There's a lot of things. Yeah, I'm just trying to think openly, I yeah. guess. So, moving on, any other issues? From me? You want to know mine? Yes. Did you not mm -hmm. express your idea? No, I, I'm, I'm going to just express it again, which okay. is that, um, and Attorney Evans is here as a representative of the buyer, uh, of the of Sons Mass, who is the proposed holder of this. So, and I, and I know last time we, there, that's, that's my concern. It's like we're, we're kind of talking about the farmers that we know as if they're the owners. They're not the owners. They're not the ones who are doing the licensing for it. Chris is working for Sons Mass, who was represented here by their attorney. And I just, I want to go on record as saying, I feel like we did have a moment when we got to meet a few people that were going to be functionally part of Sons Mass in front of us. Mm -hmm. But we haven't had a lot of clarity around that entity. They're hard to find online. They don't have a lot of presence um, as an entity and I feel a feeling a little mm, you know I, I can Pioneer Gardens is going to move so I'm not giving this to Pioneer Gardens they've been sitting here and representing this project as if it's theirs it's not it's yours and it's not yours you're the your attorney representing it so I, I, yeah. I, I have I, some concern I, I understand that concern I, I think that you could ask the uh, Arjun and, and Jeff to speak to the question of their interaction with those folks if that's helpful to you. And I'm happy to ask, and I think Dick could do this, happy to have uh, a Dick in, uh, come and introduce themselves to the planning board in the future. Yeah. So Quite honestly, we had another we, uh, entity have, come up in the last meeting, another, yet another entity's name come up, and I was like, and who is that? Yeah. You know, I mean, we've had a little bit of a sense of we're not. Kind we see like you every time. We've been seeing you for a long time. I, you know, I, I could draw your face on. That's not the problem. The problem is that we don't really have a, a strong feeling for who is going to be Sons Mass. It's not Yapanaryan. It's not Chris. You know, it's not either of you. It's somebody else altogether. And I think that's a missing piece in this, just in terms of us kind of stepping forward and embracing a big project. Love you guys. See you all the time. Just don't know who they are. Yes, uh, there was a. The whole team was the here. The team was here. I agree, I agree. We introduced and them all. We did. No, 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 no. I was here. I was here. I was here. And um, and I appreciate that. I'm just saying that. And, and it was good to meet those people who are going to be. But they're not the ultimate owners. 
the, that's the management team. That was the management team. Well, you have Blake Gilmore here today. Blake's here. We have Blake, ah, Blake, Blake taught me swimming yeah. lessons. I know that. I <laughs> But does he have a financial interest? <laughs> Blake can speak to uh, Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Blake. So I do work for them. Yes. And I have met with them several occasions in town here. Mm -hmm. We've had several meetings, that sort of thing, but these guys are usually flying in. And you're right, the management team, but it's not just the management team. We're de I've dealt with the cultivation team as well as uh, some of the business end of it. We've been meeting on a regular basis. But they're not here. You're right. Yeah, they yeah. don't live in the state. Right. But what's going to happen is that when they do start to come in here, when this project moves forward, the people that are going to get hired that could be in the business and the, the lower management area of, of the cultivation and stuff are going to be could end up being local. All right. I know a lot of a lot of people are going to be hired from within, and I know that I'll have some sort of opinion on that as well. And I've already got people in mind for. So I do, because I've been to every one of these meetings, right. I call in at the end of the night and let the people know that I, right. that I work for, what's going on here. So like I said, I think that you're going to see more local people involved in this project once it moves forward. And just quickly, Blake, your role? I'm in charge of security. security. All right. Which, again, I'll say that we did get a letter from the... Um, or an email from the police chief saying that he's very cooperative and you're showing him what you're doing and everything's, you know, he's, he's comfortable with this. Hopefully, you're not going to get approval every way, all the way through this. Yes, Sergeant. Mr. Spouter, it's not certain, so the vote ain't back spying the guns just as much as it's a double deer for those things, man, so harvest. It's affiliated with a vote in support. Uh, would actually mean that uh, uh, we can finally uh, invest in our company again. It, it basically took us uh, eight years since uh, Hurricane Irene. Uh, as a result of us uh, growing uh, flowers and not commodities, we got no money, only loans, uh, as a result of Hurricane Irene. And that's really what we have been doing. We have been eight years, uh, is it eight? Yeah, it's eight years almost. Uh, paying interest and, and principal, and that's it. And this will allow us to immediately, and we already started this, invest, buy new property, build a new greenhouse, hire more people, uh, uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, if, if, and I'm asking for your vote in support, all five of you. So can we put that as in a con condition? <laughs> <laughs> to say all that, you have to reinvest in your business? Well, that is you, you have my word for it. <laughs> What's that? You have my word, yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do the word instead of the condition. Yeah. All right. so, I'll go buy a lottery ticket tonight. And, and, and actually, there's quite a bit um, to be found online about Sun's Mass and Harvest. Uh, harvest, yes. But yeah, harvest so name affiliated keep... with Harvest. I know, but thought, that, that's know. not very clear. Then didn't, wasn't there another new name that yeah, it might turn into? There was another new into? name, but... That's not unusual to have companies Three in different names. LLCs okay. and different yes. entities for several people. occasions. Yeah, yeah. It's quite yes, common. We, did. we, did. we had another. But thank you. I thank you. And then, really you know, you guys said that at one of the earlier meetings, yes. and we, we did appreciate that, 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 that lends a lot of weight to it. So that gets into the um, benefits so outweighing the detriments. Well, when we get to the special permit, so. Who proposed this anyways, that we can have like a commercial business and an agricultural residential? Did we draft yes. that as the planning so, board? So I'll go back to, um, if you remember, when, we, so. when this whole marijuana yes, thing did. started, the town somebody brought to the planning board yep. and we started working on bylaws for cultivation only. Yep. And we were actually like, yeah, let's do cultivation in this town. This would be a good thing for this town. And that got a lot of legs on it and people seemed to support it. And then the other this dispensary came along too, but um, well, I know there was some debate because it was yeah. residential, and then they said you had to have a certain size because yeah. you know somebody right. on Eastern Avenue or yeah. wherever could put up a place. So right. there was a lot of controversy along with it, also. But this was this was one of the examples at the time we were writing the bylaws that we thought where it would work. That's yes. what that's my memory, and I think you guys were at some of those meetings, and so yeah. So you showed an interest before it was yeah. even a, a yeah. Problem. So, you know, this has really been in the works, I think, for a while. So, so having, um, so we're moving along, and as we get to this, some of the special permit, I, I'm going to jump to that as some of my questions that I asked the previous folks. Um, social structures, how, how is this going to benefit underserved people, people of color, other, other people who we were focusing on in Massachusetts, that's partly why some of us voted on this legalization. 
So yes. we, we prepared a, a draft. I, I think we don't. A, a, I don't think we addressed that very specific question um, in here, but we can certainly use this as a framework if that's helpful. Sure. Um, yes. Well, diversity plan. You don't have. That's going to that's going to come in that licensure process. Yes, that's really where you focus on that piece of it, and it's clear that that's a priority of the Commonwealth as well. And I'm just throwing it out there. That that's Absolutely, it. yeah, no, I hear uh, that. Uh, uh, yeah, focus of um, it's I don't clear know, that's focus, but it's of interest to the yeah, and it's teams. it's clearly uh, of interest to uh, the structure of those regulations and the commitment made by the commission and, and its leadership. I mean, we all. You know, I think a problem many people have is rich people are going to get richer, and that's not really what us in Deerfield are looking for. So any way we can uh, spread the wealth, spread the wealth to sure. people who could use it. Nope. You don't have to worry about um, that. We get taxes here. <laughs> I mean, Thank you. Kip. No, I understand that. I, I hear I that. What did you say, Kip? What did you say? Uh, so, so you want to you, you want to speculate on who among the progressive Democrats is going to win win the vote? I just want to see how is this going to be a, <laughs> a benefit to the larger community. No, I think you'll see you'll see that, to. and and we're happy to submit uh, those. We're happy to share with you those submittals to the commission through the licensure process. So yeah, but like, is that going to be public? That should be public information all the way through, is it? Or it's not? Some of it is not. It's not online. It's not available to the yeah. public. But you know, we're well, happy to like share to, some of it. Certainly, in this town, would be like to be kept up with that. So. Yeah. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns, people in the public? All right. So we've we've had a lot of discussions about this. I, I guess I still want to go back. So you, when you started this, said you're going to do the. We could do a condition on the A and R. After hearing about this 81X and other things, is, is that still? Um, I think that initially uh, we intended to do it as the 81X, not that I knew that that was what it was called, um, but the board expressed a preference for us to come back with an A and R, which we're amenable to if you want to write that as a I condition. I think the board understood A and R. We understood, we understood we do. the 81X. Yeah, exactly. right. um, I think you wanted, the, to, see, you wanted to see evidence that, in fact, those parcels were an integrated whole, and that's why we agreed to it. Yeah. It was a straightforward yeah. uh, response to the concerns concern. raised, and I think that's the way to do it. So we're comfortable with that. We yeah. see it happen. When you say that's the way to do it, the A and R, or the A. &R? Yeah, the a &R. that's the way we're willing to do it. Yeah. Okay. A &R. They don't have to do it that way, but they're willing. Yeah. Okay. And if it's a condition, then we have to. Sure. Right. That well, would be that's, I'm giving you a chance here to <laughs> tell us that we get the same result in a different we, way. It's a language you know. we speak. Yeah. Adam, anything else we should look out for before we close the public hearing? Um, no, you had discussed with the last application, you had discussed potential conditions before you close the hearing, which sometimes makes some sense in the event that you need some feedback from the yeah. applicant as you talk through them. And I think you can make your findings after the hearing is closed, but for conditions, it makes sense to discuss those before you yeah. vote to close. So then, um, before you close, uh, this is, we pr I attempted to send this this morning, but I made the mistake of writing an email before coffee and left the attachment off. <laughs> um, but I, mean, I did email. I've never done that before. Oh, this is what I Never that, done that right? before. Yeah. This is our, we had talked last week about uh, preparing a draft decision. Um, you may throw out any or all of this, but uh, yeah. this is our suggestion. Of, uh, we've got the name, rank, and serial number information at the beginning, uh, a reference to the plan and the revision dates on it, um, as well as what we would argue uh, our response to each of the finding points is for the special permit, and then uh, suggestions for conditions that we think captured all of the uh, issues that were discussed at least before tonight, uh, and the stormwater permit. Uh, this is for site plan review, special permit, and the stormwater permit um, all together. Uh, yeah, we will. We will. We learned our lesson before. We're going to do all three separately, just to make it sure. The but they say a lot of the same things. Yeah, and and the <coughs> conditions are common to the site plan review and special permit, and then uh, the stormwater permit has its own conditions. Yeah. They're on page three. Adam, can we make a condition part of this? Is that this is to Sons Mass Inc. and nobody else? So it can't be sold. Well, it has to. Because I know that's how our our host agreements are. 
they uh, have to come back in. How do we do that with this? You can condition the decision. Okay. I think it's in our bylaws, no, but it's yeah. not transferable. So 4667 so says neither any certain. special permit uh, or any accompanying site plan approval shall be transferable by the recipient mm -hmm. and shall terminate should the recipient cease operation of the marijuana establishment. Uh, the recipient's license from the Commonwealth expires or terminates. Uh, or the recipient assigns, but conveys, other, otherwise transfers it. said permit without uh, your permission. No, I, what I was thinking ahead is if the marijuana thing doesn't go and somebody wants to make a, a brewery out of it, just another big business. You know? yeah. That would be a change in use, though. Yeah. Sure. So this is for medical marijuana and, and regular? That's how we submitted our application. Um, the the most agreement is? Is that the host yeah. agreement? You don't just this one, number four, it says that the existing site will be used for agricultural and cultivation, which will continue. The existing residential structure and mill will remain. The existing agricultural field. Isn't that a bit misleading? Because I mean, the marijuana is not really an agricultural use, and I mean, it is you're cultivating the plant, but it's. Well, I think I, there may be when, the, when they say agricultural kit, they may be referring to the APR. No, that, plant. that's further on. No, so all. so this is saying that the existing site is used for agricultural, agriculture and cultivation. And you said which will continue, but that won't. Um, not on the entirety of the, well, so that's what I'm we, saying. we can have a philosophical a debate about that, but uh, what it's intended to say is that the, essentially that the APR fields continue to be in agriculture um, and, and that we're. Right. Which I'm not sure, again, we don't need to say that because that's right. just the, right. that's the restriction that's already on. And the, res sure the residential it's... structures on Mill Village Road will remain, structures will remain, but they're not going to be residential anymore. Correct. Um, and the, that's was it, that was an issue with the septic. They were gonna, you were going to consolidate the septic. We were going to have a yeah. drawing on that. Yeah. Were you going to do that? They already did that. Yeah, we're working with Dick on um, oh, okay. the specifics, okay. and we have to get a permit through him right. for anything that we do. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Sorry. Um, so what I was responding to there. So is there like some guidelines saying you can't have residential? premises on this piece of property, that's why they're not going to be used as residential anymore? No. It's because there wasn't enough frontage and they had to, they had to combine the lots. And so the homes, you know. Right. So we can't have the multiple uses on the so same lot. They'll just be offices or whatever. Yeah. Right. And so I, I, I should have uh, included in here the prompts from the special permit. Uh, that, that number four, again, is referring to neighborhood character. Um, and uh, the idea that while not meeting, uh, while defined as not agriculture for the purposes of the agricultural exemption under zoning, that we're still growing plants. Um, and it's still a greenhouse and it's still cultivating well, even if it doesn't meet that. And ultimately, I think Aryan makes the point that this is enhancing our agricultural footprint in this area because otherwise this is a farm that is going to this this under stress because of hiring I mean that 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 in and of itself is I think on that score that I'm satisfied on that but I agree it's unclear well it's not right it's not an agricultural use Two percent, no, it's great. 
They can at time can ask for three percent, right? They can, but fortunately they didn't. <laughs> I'll Perhaps that's because this, of the twenty-five thousand. Yeah, let me think about this. Yeah, there was no the three percent was on retail sales. This is on everything. Mm -hmm. I uh, think that's regardless right. of the way it's worded is so. Uh, this might not happen, but say, Sun put up a retail store on Route Five and Ten, they could say, well, you know, we're not wholesaling that, or they could sell it all and say we are wholesaling. So either way, we're getting two percent of whatever the dollar value is of what they grow, mm -hmm. regardless. If they wanted to do that, they'd have to come back and get a new host agreement from you, and then you could impose the 3% at that point. They'd have to file a new application with the CCT. They'd need a new license if they well, we establish do. a retail establishment. Right, because the 3% that was outlined was for the retail. I well, should, I well no, let me clarify that, Kip. Um, the excise tax that the consumer pays to the retailer that goes to Boston and then comes back to the town, that's 3% part Correct. of the overall 20% of the consumer. Pays. Correct. Now, host, uh, communities may impose a community impact fee up to 3% of gross sales, and that's both retail and wholesale. And, wholesale. Right. And, and in this case, this host community agreement has a flat one-time upfront payment, I think, of $25,000 and 2%, that would be 2% of wholesale <coughs> sales. Right. Of all the sales, regardless of who the ultimate well, retailer was. Yes, that's right. I mean, yes, whoever they sold well, to. Like I get to my point. That. So whether or not Sons sells it to other shops or they open their own shop, it it's, yeah. doesn't matter uh, to us. Do right. I understand it correctly that the, uh, the other organization here that's at 10 Greenfield Road, they're going to have the whole whole have a sales and everything right there. So don't we limit it to one in the town of, of Deerfield? No. No. Actually we haven't did we impose it that from I dispensaries to be limited? I no, thought with the no. retail we did. We have, have a hundred of them here in Deerfield. I think well, I asked I think that the question. You have You've got two thousand feet between retail. And we only have two zones for them, so it really Well we there's it only to two, one. I don't, you can't, there's not enough. I thought it was related to the number of liquor licenses yeah. or something. You're right. That's yeah, it. They can. 20%. That comes in. It's what? 20%. 20% of the number of liquor licenses. Mar 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 marijuana, marijuana retailers um, are permitted until the number of retailers equals or exceeds 20% of the number of licenses issued within the town for the retail sale of alcoholic beverages to be drunk on the premises. So but, you're, you're. But our bylaw says they have to be 2,000 feet apart. And there's. And our area is so small that that can't happen. This is for retail. But where, this, where we have them zoned for. Right, but this limits this limits them to one anyway, does it not? I thought it did. And then do you have more? Do you have, the do only you have way more you get two on site consumption, like our licenses for on site consumption? The only way you get two is if you had somebody right. doing medical marijuana already and, and wanted to add the, the um, uh, recreational to use to it. Yeah, can we? Is this let's get let's get back. It's almost done. What did you say about consumption? Sweet. Five places? Did you say that you can consume alcohol? Do we I just asked it? if you had more than four on four yes, more than five liquor licenses in Deerfield for on-site consumption. Six. It's cold here. We need some water. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> See, because these guys aren't going to do any retail, um, right? Yeah, no, they're not. Let's sale. let's get re re refocus here. So I guess that's what started. It was started, John. There was, we started to move into the retail part of it. Yes, but this, is, this is not retail. Right. This is all uh, not. So really what we want to talk about, so this is decision, so, just yeah. a draft decision letter that we asked them to do. We can, right. this isn't at all, right. we can make a lot of changes. I'm going to make some changes. Right. But I don't know if we need to get into this as much as we do the findings. What, what yeah. conditions do we want to put on any? Right. So, and the conditions are on page three that we've suggested. Right. Yeah. Why, is, why do we care if four is a condition? No, 
do we care if they're used as residences? It came up uh, from Dick Kalashevsky, yeah. um, to be clear about that. I, I, they'd be illegal to be used as residences, anyway, but, but we included it. Right. And and to Roger's point, uh, do you want to, I mean, do, do we, it's, yeah, see, that's, it's, it's the end of the night. There you go. Broken glasses. Justice is blind. Um, your point of making it a, what two sun mass suns mass specifically? Do you want to double double tape that one? And uh, why am I making this? Why is it make I, sure that only a medical marijuana treatment I mean, non transferable? Non transferable. So the yeah, I didn't bring it up, but yeah, I think that's you what you'd want to do, Rachel. I think you actually. Okay. So the application. So the <laughs> under your current bylaw, and we know the medical may be going away, but it hasn't yet. Yeah. Um, under your bylaw, the planning board is site plan review for medical and is site plan review and special permit for adult use. And we just wanted to make sure all bases were covered. So our permit is, is for both. And it's called medical marijuana treatment plant, not that it's a treatment center. It's right, that's, that's just, just the, name the, the definition yeah. in the that's bylaw. Yeah, I was going to yeah. ask that because I didn't think yeah. it was a treatment center. That's so it's old, not, but the bylaw language. just refers to anything having to do with medical, medical marijuana, marijuana as a treatment center. And that somehow oh, that's the so state must have used that at some point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so the regulations actually replaced that term medical marijuana treatment center with the term registered marijuana dispensaries, RMD is the but term. But these aren't, there's not going to be a dispensary. Right. 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 Also confusing. So the, the, it's the it's language is still bad. Street motor vehicle. Oh, RMD. Uh, lawyers had to have written all this. I want my kids. You start with a very badly drafted uh, piece of public uh, public democracy called called the first draft. No lawyer knew of what anything. to do with it. Right, right. Legislation legislators had to fix it. Adam, is it three times now? I think it's Sounds like times. Microsoft Office. Three fixes to it. Uh, and two, actually, two. Two. And the bylaws, you, you, you need to be catching up with all those changes. So that's part of what we need. That's why we have to redo right. our bylaws. Mm -hmm. We'll have to find out what we We'll talk. We'll talk. So some of these are things that we already say. You have to get a certificate of completion from the town for the stormwater, which a lot of people don't, but they're supposed to. Yeah. And is there a place in here that talks about maintenance of the of the stormwater permit? You know, keeping any kind of maintenance records on it, or is that just not necessary? Well, does that go under finding number one under stormwater? All comments provided by the board's peer review engineer were addressed and incorporated into the final plans. Is there a uh, operations and maintenance? There is as part of the stormwater report that was submitted. Right. Yeah. Yes. It's in. Uh, it kind of goes into that, I think. Yeah, where is in that conservation, at? Conservation, I this think. Probably. Where is that at? It's in this box. Oh, no, but not in here, though. Um, that is not in as a condition. Um, Honestly, for the stormwater permit, I took the Cumberland Farms, I think, and um, saw what the conditions were under that decision for stormwater. You can reference the submissions as a package mm -hmm. as you're proceeding with the decision. Yeah, I mean, here's mm -hmm. all the stormwater stuff. Mm -hmm. Here, let me grab those. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so operation and maintenance I typically have right at the very end. Well, mm -hmm. Maybe I didn't understand the question, but I guess I think they're asking who will monitor that to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to be, retain the water, no more is going off. Right, so uh, you know, we have a maintenance plan that uh, you know, essentially the owner is saying, here is how we plan to maintain uh, the stormwater system. Uh, who in town enforces that? I don't know. I, I would ask you. Well, we, we've studied some other things, in different different plans, not this one here. Right. But but actually, part of it says, okay, you'll keep a maintenance there and tell us how you're maintaining your your sure thing and have it available so that it's a, it's not a one time document when you build it. It's it's going on and on from right. until it's done. T typically. Uh, you have a zoning enforcement officer, right. and and by default that is your building inspector. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by default, 
you can, as a town, elect to uh, create that position as a separate position. But right now, I would assume because it's a condition of the special permit that it would be enforced by, by a commission. building inspector as the zoning enforcement officer. Yeah, I that's think that's it. the way it is done. That is. Yeah. But yeah. I've seen retention ponds with trees growing on them. Oh, yeah. No, no, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. And typically, because of the way it's a problem across the Commonwealth, uh, be, because of understaffing issues, because right. of understaffing issues, uh, most zoning enforcement occurs as a result of a complaint. Right. And most building officials require a written complaint just to, to respond. To action. Yeah, so, so I hear you. I know, and it's like even when the zoning board or we put up a, a screen, sometimes those screens are there and then they get cut down and nobody yeah, calls right. them on it I, right. I, because nobody knows they even exist. Paul, so I think I know it just happens. I, I think your point, your, your point relative to um, the O and M plan, and I haven't seen this O and M plan, so maybe this is already incorporated. Is that many planning boards are required to submit of annual reports, and although the annual report in and of itself doesn't ensure enforcement or doesn't ensure compliance, it the fact that they've got to actually fill out a document and prepare a report is an incentive for them to actually comply with the requirements yeah. of the O and M plan. And then if there is a future enforcement action, they ought to have a stack of the annual reports to show that they've done what they're supposed to have done. Okay. Most O&M plans include that requirement. I don't know if this one does, but I've seen boards included as a condition that there yeah. shall be compliance with the O&M plan with appropriate annual reports. And some boards require those reports to be filed with the town. It just depends on whether you want the paperwork or not. Some towns don't want a stack of annual reports right, filed right. for every project. And, and I'll say when I write an O&M, I only put in the reporting requirement if it's uh, required in a bylaw. And right. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Though. Yeah. How are we doing? So I I think these sleeping. are the these findings are good with with me. The main one is this thing about MDAR and then the uh, conservation commission. Uh, select board just gonna review. I think it's a good idea to do an O and M report. I think just in very clearly because this is a new venture. Um, and I don't think it's a huge, you know, um, it's a huge onus on the company to say we're doing a good job. <laughs> I think it would be a good condition to put in. Mm -hmm. um, or I think the stormwater management, Rachel? The operations and management, yeah, yeah. So, that, so we just had, and especially water is an issue, it's a new agricultural venture, blah, blah, blah. I just think it would be smart of us to put that in as well. Yeah, especially where they got the cisterns in there, that's supposed mm -hmm. to be Just part new. of their stormwater right. management. They could disappear or whatever. Right. New, new, and the new maintenance business. of the, the whatever kind of machinery you're using to keep the um, smell inside the greenhouses. Well, uh, uh, yeah, sure, we could put that on there. I think, again, that's a little bit like you're, you're going to respond. And in the smell thing, it's going to be a complaint. You, you right. know, that's mm -hmm. not going to be something that what, you're going in. What we've had on other out. projects as a condition is uh, a, a no odor at the property line. Yeah. Because we yep. should be keeping the odor within the building. So right. if it's at the property line, um, that means something's failing. That would, um, well, what's the, I thought the CCC has a requirement. I don't know specifically what their requirement is. But I'm just saying that, that. That's something we could add in. We've, I mean, whether the CCC, right. I mean, we're kind of well, doubling up on a lot of things. Are going to have to apply with it? Well. <laughs> We'll I'd like to say we're we'll not going to be the stinkiest neighbors on the that. block. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Anything else? I know there's other residents in the area, but nobody's even stepped up with any concerns, residents. Steve was here earlier. Yeah, I think we heard. Just any other public off? comments? Seeing none, would the planning board want to make a motion to close the public hearing? And uh, do, do any applicants anymore? Or anything else? New information? Nothing new. I think so. No. Nothing new. I think we've hit every, crossed yeah, every so. T and dotted every The line. only thing I'll say to that is, John, I know I've listened to everybody about the, the APR lane and stuff, but I still think we should have NDAR. M MDAR. A weigh in on it. I know they're not going to, according to everybody, but if we close the hearing, we can't get any information from them. But well, what I know we, we can't go on forever. Well, what if we have this finding number five? Let's keep that a condition. That they inform, I mean, we, we have already informed them right. about it. They'll officially inform them again. 
if they hear back, <clears throat> they let us know what they heard back. Uh, I'm pretty confident They're it's, it's going to be gonna. years before they come up with any new <laughs> ruling on hey. this. I mean, I'm, yeah, if they come up with a new ruling. And I think they already came up with a ruling that you can't grow marijuana on, and that's not what we're talking about here. So to me, that's the right. bottom line. So is there anything else we could say about it? or? No, I'm just, you know, I think we all had our concerns about it. Well, there was that language that you read a minute ago that... Right, yeah. so, so I think in addition to the one, two, three, four, five conditions that are here, and that the last one begins to touch on it in the draft decision, where it talks about, um, you know, should the applicant receive uh, any notice of action taken by MDAR that they'll uh, notify the, the planning board. Um, I think we also include that condition we had talked about before, which is that, you know, the, the APR land not be developed in such a way that will place the marijuana establishment out of compliance with the 30% impervious max, so that that condition is enforceable. Mm -hmm. So if they do something in the future, like attempt to construct uh, ag uh, agricultural structures on the APR land, you would have a right of enforcement of your bylaw. Or if they come before you seeking permission, you could deny them permission, notwithstanding the agricultural protection because of that condition. But isn't that already? No, because point being that if, if they came back with it, and they said if, it was if, agricultural, right? But if they wanted to add six hundred square feet or more, they have to come back here or change your use of something, right? And then we would say now you're not in compliance with the thirty percent uh, per, per service, and they would say we don't have to be in compliance because, because we're adding to the agricultural land and we're right. subject to the exemption well, under right. so they could say that. Yeah. Right, 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 right. All right. So that's why. That it's a, that's why it's a good. Good. That's what it gives it's like us. an extra layer. It's an extra layer. It's, it's, it's still no guarantee. It. It's right. additional protection. Right. So you like his wording? <laughs> Suspenders and belt. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that gets back to your coming home issue. Is that I'm tired? The APR land has to stay, um, you know, open. <laughs> All right, so I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. All right. Close the public hearing at 9.55. It's getting late now. Hmm. So let's do a site plan review. I move. <laughs> Just to move it along. <laughs> that we approve the site plan review for 198 uh, Mill Village based on the application, based on the plans submitted uh, with revisions of February 25th, 2019, with uh, the following the conditions. Um, Oh, well, here we go. We're going back to us. the conditions. You want to, should we just go through them? Okay, yeah, we've got, got a, a first, we've got, it's been got moved so far. Do we far. need to do them for each? I mean, some of them are more site plan review conditions than, than special permits and vice versa. Yeah, I mean, my, my okay. recommendation where you're doing both is that you just repeat the conditions in both decisions. Yeah. I think if you Same. vote them in the site plan, then you can just repeat them. Right. Ditto, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, with the conditions that we've just discussed. But can, but can Adam just read them just in case yeah. we... Yeah. Okay, sure. So the conditions that I have are essentially the five conditions that are in the draft decision you have. Number one, order of conditions. Number two, special permit from the select board for the medical. This is on page three. This is on page three. Uh, number three is the submittal of an ANR plan in lieu of the 81X plan. Uh, number four is uh, upon transfer, the uh, two residential properties will cease to be used as residences. Uh, number five is that the applicant and owners have to comply with the APR, and if they receive any notice of action taken by MDAR, that they'll uh, submit that to the planning board upon receipt. And we're going to further modify that to also state that um, the APR land not be developed to, uh, so as to place the marijuana establishment out of compliance with zoning, and specifically that 30% uh, impervious surface maximum. So those are the five we have in the decision. Additionally, you wanted a condition that says that the permit shall be non-transferable. I'll just mimic the language that's already in your bylaw. Uh, you want a condition that there be no odor at the property line. 
and uh, I already covered the A and R because that was already in their conditions. How about, how about a reporting of operations, of, of compliance with operations? That will go in the stormwater uh, that permit. That's specific. Got to it. Thank you. I'm yeah. sorry. That's what I have. Do we have a second? Second. Any more discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? No, I, I said aye. Aye. So five uh, zero. Abstain. Five zero zero. Five zero zero. I move we approve a special permit for uh, Sun's Mass at 198 Mill Village Road. And again, we, we kind of have already gone through some of these. Um, but the special permit, I believe, is a uh, the benefits outweigh the detriments in that the town adopted the bylaw and I did discussions at the time where they, they wanted to allow cultivation of this, that this benefits one of our long-standing uh, farm operations, increases the tax base, and it doesn't, doesn't appear to have um, any major detriments. It's in a, in a location where it's not, uh, we didn't ask about daycare, but I, I don't think it's anywhere near a daycare facility. There's some baby <laughs> cows close by. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get into that. Well, um, and then we have the other five points. What page is that? Social economic need. Yeah, that's right there. You want to you want to do the five points this thing? I got it here. How does this one? Um, uh, Paul, so, do you still have them there? Yeah, yeah. I okay. turned that guy back here, but it's forty. It's forty-six. Okay. It's a forty-six hundred. Social economic or community needs. Served by the proposal. I don't. I don't. That's kind of what we talked about. Yeah. Town voted for it. Yeah. It's good use. Uh, if, if, it, if it's out of any assistance to the board, the draft decision on page two. Yes, has all this. Items yeah. one through six mimic right there, right. mimic items. That items fifty-two, fifty-three, twenty-one through fifty-three, twenty-six. On this too. We've. <laughs> <laughs> We've oh, you have it. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's given. And so we're just gonna do it one more time. We can do it. I just would like to. Um, I'd like to edit some of these, so I. That's oh, why I'm. That's why I'm asking. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, Here yeah. we go. So not yeah. verbatim, but we'll come back in general. Yep. Okay. So um, traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading. Adequacy of utilities and other public public services, including the rip rap splash pad, which I always love. Was that on this one? I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you on a tour of it. Oh my god. <laughs> and. Uh, Neighborhood character and social structures. Feels like it's not going to change that much. Sure. Impacts on the natural environment. We do have concerns. We're addressing those, but and they're the also is gonna and they're existing them. actually as well. They're not new. Yeah. And then uh, potential fiscal impact, including impact on town services, tax base, and employment. And we've just hit some of those notes as well. Hmm. So. There. Uh, is there a second? That was me making that motion, I think. Was okay. it? Was oh, Us? I'm going to make that motion. All right, that was me. Rachel made the motion. Oh, Rachel. Yeah, okay. make. We can always erase your name, John. <laughs> is, there, is there a second? I'll second. Kip second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Five zero zero. Okay. And I move we approve the stormwater permit for Suns Mass at 198 Mill Village Road. I second. Met all the um, our peer review requirements, and we'll have the condition that the there is an O and M plan, and this what was it? Do you want a report? A report annual or how? Yeah, annual. I think it's. I mean, it's a. It's a it's a new industry. It's a new business. I think it's worth an annual report. Yeah, that that no, way. It's <laughs> Personally, Rachel, I think they probably should do that with all storm water because, like yeah. you say, I you agree. You see a lot of them go to disrepair. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. And and it should be simple. It should be simple. Yeah. I mean, so, and so even who, the the delivery listen. of it is a is a check. Anyway, so I I, I would so like to see So who just that. moved the storm water? Uh, John did. I John. moved it. Kip seconded it with that with that condition. Kip seconded. it. And what was your what was your addition to that, to Kip? Uh, uh, um, I, I call. The condition was the stormwater report, the O and M. O and M. Okay. Report every uh, annual. That was Rachel. 
report annually. And again, the plans that we are, are approving for that, I believe, are also on this. Uh, they are. They're on this, this is the landscape and everything. The February Correct. 25th, 2019 plans. They're not. They're not elaborate. They're straightforward. Which comply with all the our peer review comments. Mm -hmm. Correct. All those. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, um, abstain. Five zero zero. Got it. Uh, that's a lot of votes that went. Five zero zero. I know. That's right. You got. I'm a little surprised, but you got one more because you need to. Oh, have then you have to give someone here. authority. Can okay. someone else take care of this? Um, What's the timing on it? It's the same timing. I heard in the next. I heard. Yeah. Um, Kip saying he might do another one. Oh, that'd be nice, Kip. Oh, come on. <laughs> Please. I don't know, Roger was all there. Well, you're coming to sign the other one. You might as well do both at the same no, time. No, you got to review it, too. He's going to send a draft to you and stuff, and I, I'd rather not. I, I'm, get, I'm going on the 14th. <laughs> <laughs> for, for 10 days, and really I need this. it. <laughs> for for somebody who I hates know, marijuana. I, I, oh, I, um, I move that Kip um, take on the... Review of the Review decision, of the decision and, and, and sign, and sign on, on, on RBI. I'm, I'm going on a trip to Poland. <laughs> <laughs> I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we need a supreme majority for that one now. No, we do okay. not. That doesn't require us. That doesn't require us. <laughs> <laughs> was it 410? Yes, it Aye. was. Maybe you abstain. You can oppose it. You can get <laughs> It's a conflict oh, of interest. Kip. Come on, come on. Kip. Oh, You're the best, Kip. You're the best. I, I Thank you. Dreaming, five right? zero one. Five zero zero. Five zero, zero. Five zero, zero. No, we can't have five zero one. I know. Five zero. <laughs> well, you wanna, you, yeah, you have to accept this. Okay. You don't have to, but five zero zero, Kip. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank all you very much for uh, your, uh, coming to all these public hearings. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. before we leave, could I just I have two quick okay. points. No one problem. is. <clears throat> Lest there be any question about the validity of tonight's votes, Paul and Kip, having missed one meeting, I've prepared the certification form that says they looked at the video. I already put uh, that Did you already sign one? Oh, no. that the great. Mullins, the Mullins report? Yeah, yeah Mullins. You have a good blank one there? We yeah. Just, we would love to keep it, get some copies of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the other thing. I uh, have signed, I've signed mine. Okay, thank you. Thank you very oh, much. Missed uh, I just want to say thank you for your patience, your endurance, and your courtesy, and for your thoroughness with regard to this application. I want you to know that our clients, Sons Mass Inc. and their affiliates, are people that, in our estimation, are the great, have a great sense of responsibility toward this project. And I'm very confident in saying that you will be proud of your decision tonight and that they will be very good members of the Deerfield business community. Thank you. Yes, do get that in the minutes. Well, Dick Evans, if there's any problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know where to find me. <laughs> I heard him say, I guarantee that. So uh, I like it. Hold on, let me look at the mail. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just one quick thing is I got three things in front of me from the Council of Governments. They're invoices that I would like to sign as the chair to pay um, for, for peer review and technical review. Um, Who did we that with Pat? That was back with Pat. Yeah, these are kind of old ones. And then there appears to have been some, um, something happened with our solar projects where they didn't pay the right fees. So now our accountant isn't paying our consultants because we didn't get it so we're trying to work that out but that's just a point of information and uh, but I think it does make me think that we have to make sure that before we even let these people come and talk to us we have to get their fee in-house and sometimes it's that thing that we're not sure how much the fee is and that's kind of our bad I think we have to kind of straighten that I mean, out a little bit, but, so so. you're saying that the accountant didn't collect the money for uh, the fees uh, apparently and I thought we were clear it was $3,000 because it's more than it's like 10 acres or something. So instead of charging 40,000 based on right. our, we said 3,000 is the max, plus 30, 250 for the right, application. 30 to 50. And apparently and who it wasn't. Where did we get it from? You know? um, I think both, both Frontier and the railroad. And I don't know if it's also no, the peer I know review. We, I know we could have. Or it could be the peer review fee. That's what I'm not sure. The rip? You, you mean the, the big one we did or the most recent one? The two most recent, Frontier yeah, yeah, okay. and, and then right uh, Railroad and yard. And the railroad yard. So I asked Priscilla to get back in touch because I she usually collects or she's yeah. usually involved in billing them and getting the fees so I was kind of surprised so, so you have three for cog bills yeah so I'm going to approve three cog bills how um, much are they 
you know, they're, they're what we own. I don't know. Does it matter? That's my wife. Oh, I don't, I don't care. I don't, if you don't want them in the minutes, you don't know. No, no. Just, just say that they're... Uh, Pay three for cog bills. Yeah. Okay. Any wealth, anything else? Anything else? Uh, there's a um, call for comment on a um, ZBA um, appeal. Public hearing on the 21st, 29... It's 117 Old Main Street in Deerfield. The applicant's Charles Bado, B-A-D-O. 117 uh, North Old Main, Main Street. Street. Old Main Street. Old Main Street. Old, Old Main, Main Street. Okay. And um, it says, the applicant requests relief from sideline setback of 10 feet to 3 feet on pre-existing grandfathered lot. The purpose is for the construction of a new addition and remodel of existing garage construction of new second floor bedrooms over existing garage and new first floor addition. Do you uh, know where that structure is, Rachel? No, I mean, what's Old Main Street? I never even heard of that. Through Old Deerfield. It's, it's. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I think it begins where Mill Village and it goes all the way to five and 10. I think that's Old Main Street. Oh. Yeah, yeah, right through the village. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised she didn't realize that. <laughs> That's called Old Main Street? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, do we have any comments? In I have Old no comments. Deerfield. Does anybody have comments? I don't, I don't have any comments. No comments. No comment. That's what they call it. All right. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I'll second the motion. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Next meeting. I got a question. Is it April 1st or April 8th? So, Adam, if we wanted to impose a restriction where if it's APR property, it cannot be used to meet any of our zoning requirements. Could we do that on top of APR restrictions? So you could do it one of two ways. You could do it um, by amendment of your zoning bylaw. I've seen zoning bylaws that um, prohibit all sorts of um, types of land for, from being used to satisfy dimensional requirements. I recently came across, I'm actually litigating a case right now because I think it's poorly drafted and I represent the private applicant that got denied a permit because they, the town denied them the opportunity to use an, e an area of their property that was subject to an easement that the neighbor had to put their septic system. Um, they relied, the town relied upon a provision in the zoning bylaw that said no portion of the property that doesn't qualify as buildable area. But you could you could craft a provision of your zoning that said no portion of a property that is being used that's subject to an easement for another property can be counted toward lot coverage or counted toward lot area. Um, as you've probably seen in many communities, you've got upland requirements now. Many communities don't just restrict lot area to minimum one or two or three acre lot size. They say minimum two acre lot size with no less than one and a half acres of up. So they're actually limiting the amount of the land that could be wetland. So you can you could do it the same way. You could say no portion of a lot that's subject to an agricultural preservation restriction shall be used to satisfy the requirements in the zoning bylaw. Short of going to town meeting, if you wanted to do it on a case by case basis, you could do it to the extent that you have a say in the negotiation of the APR. So if you were permitting a project and as a condition of that Absolutely. permit, you were requiring an APR be placed in a portion of the property, mm -hmm. you could say in the condition, and in negotiating that APR, the APR shall include a condition that no land subject to the APR shall be used to satisfy zoning requirements. But if you're not, if you don't have a role in the negotiation, if there's just a landowner that goes to the government to, to put an APR on their property, you don't have any say in that. So right. you wouldn't have any ability to negotiate the terms, even after the fact. But in those other two circumstances, you can structure it. Or, again, the best way to do it is to go to town meeting. Because if it's in your bylaw, it's in your bylaw. And then it replies. So we could do a bylaw and it would be legal. You could. I think that's what we should do. I do too. Because, like Kip said, this is going to not be the only one we're going to see. I just think it, you, what you're doing is you're making it very clear what it is that you're looking for in terms of your percentages. I think if I was kind of like that you're excluding APR and maybe wetlands. Is that what I'm thinking? Yeah, you're going to be very specific. I mean, this yeah, is... Well, you'd have to do the wetlands. You know, if you wanted to do that, you'd have I to... So. Like, add next, the same next meeting. And, and I think, you know, with, with maybe less so with APR, although maybe not in a community like Deerfield. I imagine you've got a fair amount of APR land. Um, you'd want to have some sort of a planner 
take a good look at it and see what you know how many properties it's going to affect, particularly with things like wetland, because remember these are they're zoning bylaws, so structures are grandfathered. But now, let's say that you adopted that provision that said, we've got two acres zoning, but you need at least a minimum one and a half acres of upland. Every property in town that's a two acre site that's compliant with zoning today that doesn't have an acre and a half of upland that has three quarters of, is now non conforming. Oh, there could be a zillion of them then. And right. so every time they want to modify their single family home. Yeah, I never heard that them. before because I said, wow, that's like almost having like a, a three, eight, three and a half acre building lot or whatever. Because the upland is for acre and a half and two acres, yeah. So you just have to be mindful of how many properties are renters non conforming and what that means because I've seen this happen in communities and then it it, it brings your it, it's total gridlock for your ZBA because now everybody that wants to modify their single family house needs a special permit or a finding from ZBA and their agendas yeah. are now four hours long. And even if you put the restriction wetlands, you know, there's certain parts of town that there isn't wetlands, but there's a lot and if you said you couldn't count that land in, it would make a lot of places unbuildable or sort of useless. Right. So, uh, you're right, you've got to be careful. And this ABR issue is not <laughs> at least a marijuana. I just think that you're seeing it now in this context because the fact that cultivation is allowed in residential districts may be near or closer to some of this some of this APR land. Because any any use in the past that simply wants to borrow some A and R land some some APR land for purposes of Combining it with their their lot for coverage um, could have always done this. This is not new. It's just now with this concept of marijuana establishments and cultivation allowed in residential districts, it's opened it up to you know to that sort of use. I don't know. From my point of view, when you you can say growing flowers is agricultural, growing marijuana might be you're growing something, but. For me, it's not what they're actually doing so much, is that you're now going to have this big red building in the middle of the farmland. That, to me, it doesn't matter if you're growing flowers inside or you're molding plastic, you know, snow shovels. It's, it's still a big, 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 you know, building in the you middle know, of the farmland. But hopefully it supports the open space around it. That's yeah, but you know, ag buildings to support agriculture yeah. out in the farmland. But that's not the case here. Well, I was like thinking I'm the characteristics the yeah. because it's residential, agricultural. Yeah. So I'm thinking, well, they're going to build this big warehouse yeah. to yeah. manufacture, but they Can could build a big warehouse to store potatoes or exactly. squash or exactly. whatever. So yep. Yep. In, that, that should be lost. Yep. Can we? I got two two more quick things. Well, next um, meeting. What's the date? I love it when I get that. I'm like, <laughs> April first or the eighth? First is. What's the first Monday of um? Uh, first. April 1st, April Fool's Day. So why wouldn't we do it? Okay, that? April 1st, good. I'm not available, so someone, else can, be, uh, someone okay. else can be chair. April 1st, I won't be here either. Well, no Rachel, no Roger. No, so Rachel. No, yes. John, no, John. Okay, so hopefully there's four of you that can come. W. Oh, no, no Rachel. No Roger. No April Rachel first? either? Yeah. Unless my visa to Saudi Arabia doesn't come through. Adam, will you be here? Oh. <laughs> April 8th, is that better? 8th is better. I'm, I'm back. And I'm probably back. But I might not end up going. This might be 8th, okay. Is it back to the 8th then? Yep. I guess so. Okay. If we want to have a corner. All right. And one last Drive thing is on the... Eight, okay. I think it's fine. Yeah. On January 23rd, we did that re-vote of the 100 railroad yard yeah. solar that we approved. Yeah. And there's the signature page for it here. So we're, Diane and I are still finishing the decision, but if... We could just sign this because we didn't give each other, we didn't give any one person authority to do it. Okay. And um, the people who were there on the 23rd are um, everybody but Roger. So, is this what's this one? You, Special this, permit? This is the. Uh, site plan review of the. Of the okay, so that's RE not a super majority then. John, did we ever get an updated thing on uh, what state regulations are, exist now to Roger. govern we can't sign anybody. Can't. Um, like marijuana retail or grow state regulations? You know, there, I'm not sure what you're necessarily talking about but on I went online and there's all kinds of stuff right. from the cannabis control and I printed out these things about municipality and about the diversity plan because I was curious about that yeah and it talks about the fees and the, how much you can charge so there's a whole there's like 
I don't know, 12 different sections or something right. that kind of add up to the. Those are just guidance documents. Right, that's right. Those are, that's right. Those are the guidance. You can click on public documents right. and have a whole series of guidance. But the regulations are no different than what was adopted yeah. when I work with you to craft your regulation. Um, the only difference is that there was a transition plan yeah, within the regulations right there yeah. that said that as of December 31st of 2018, the medical program was going to be subsumed into the, into the general area. regulations. Mm -hmm. And the Department of Public Health that was overseeing medical was going to relinquish control and the Cannabis Control Commission, which was handling the recreational, was going to also start handling the, the medical. That's the real difference that exists today. Okay. The two, the two schemes emerged. Do we have nothing on the docket for next time? I think we cleaned we things no up. Didn't we clean things up tonight? Thank you, tonight. Adam, very much for helping us clean things up. It was. Uh, this is the document that um, a little bit of a stretch Dick provided oh, okay. the, for the child care. Do you want to put that in the file? Yes. Yeah, he can have that. He showed me this before, and he's, you know, he's. But that's kind of remarkable. We haven't had like a meeting where we haven't done something. So there's a bunch of issues so that bring, people bring some apple oh, crisp and I'll bring the coffee. I don't know yet. I, I moved. I'm, I uh, Kip moved it and I seconded it. All those in favor of adjourning. Aye. Aye. Aye.